Welcome to Boss Rush Podcast. I'm your host, the excited and the light of the world. And joining me this episode, since our boss man is still with his work whistle, but he's, um, if you can hear it, he'll be warping back in for uh, Arsenal X that you guys do not want to miss. Uh, you guys really want to check that out. And also, um, our vice press counsel tonight, Mr. Jesse Douglas, uh, kind of found, uh, a bit some vacation time uh in the system i was trying to uh i was just like hmm. jesse kind of found a new version of the oregon trail and uh went and go take it take it. i was gonna go there but don't uh, get dysentery jesse <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> don't get dysentery <laughs> but i have two special guests joining me on this episode and everybody this is the episode you can you're going to have to watch uh she's the celestial brush of Boss Rush Podcast and at another Zelda podcast, Mr. Celeste Roberts. Hey. I'm a Mr. Celeste Roberts. Okay, I'm just picking on. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I'll be like Sheik with Zelda. <laughs> uh, when yeah. I met Sheik in Ocarina of Time, I fell in love. I love her. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wish I were that amazing. I think that was a great choice to show Zelda as being way more badass than she had been portrayed. You no, know, yeah. I I I've never I've always had a problem with uh the damsel in distress uh story type, which is why when they did that with with uh Zelda, when they did it with uh with uh Princess Peach, you know, stuff like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Uh but you know, it's always like, yes, like uh, cuz I'm tired of just rescuing you. Like come rescue me <laughs> sometime. <laughs> I was I was gagged with that reveal. I was just like, wait, what? Yes. I know, oh. I know. Yes. Well, who else is our guest, Ed? He is, is this is his new nickname, so he should be happy about this one. He's the gunner that you want as your hunter. It's LeRon D. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, more and more Monster Hunter shoutouts. I love it. Thanks for having me back on here. Uh, I, I I swear you guys make me feel more and more at home the more I do these. <laughs> Uh, well, like I said, you're part of Boss Rush, so it's it's. Uh, it's so nice to, to, to finally meet you, LeBron. I, I'm enjoying the one v one as I'm going through it. It's three hours long, so I'm listening to it. <laughs> <in> <laughs> right, I, I swear, I did not. I did not mean to talk that much. I'm so sorry. Oh, don't apologize. <laughs> but but in our personal talks, in, in LeBron, I was just like. I love that we get to nerd out like that, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what I, I miss. I, you know, that's why I wish I grew up with that. I could just nerd with somebody for hours upon hours. You know, I try to hide my nerd and it, it's gotten to the point where I bully people when that, when their nerd is showing, I'm like, Hey man, you need, you need to dial it back some. <laughs> no, you, you can't do it with me. Cause I will pull it. <laughs> I, I will pull it out of you. I will. I will hold me and run like Mario. <laughs> well, as long as people don't try to make me do weird things in real life, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that. Yeah. So, uh, yes, everybody, this is uh, Boss Rush Podcast. I am so happy that Celeste and LeBron can join me. We're going to get into some housekeeping. Uh, for those who don't know this, this is the Boss, a Boss Rush Podcast, where each and every week, uh, live on twitch.tv slash bossrushgames.live. Sorry, brother, got that messed up. Corey, Jesse, and I, uh, as well as our friends from around the internet, come together to share our passion for games. If you can't join us live on Saturdays, no big deal. You can head on over to youtube.com slash bossrushgames or your favorite podcast service Monday mornings to catch the show. Remember to like, subscribe, follow, rate, and review wherever you consume it. Follow us on Twitter at Bosch Rush Podcast. And remember, you can see all of our content and on BossRushGames.com. And of course, everybody, this is a recorded episode, but still, do check out our past content. Check out Celeste's 1v1 and Women in Gaming panel. Uh, check out uh, LeBron's 1v1 and the Pride panel that we did. Sorry about that. And Celeste and LeBron, you may actually be coming back on because LeBron, I'm thinking of doing a history of Monster Hunter. And Celeste, I'm thinking of doing a history of Mass Effect. Ooh, or, uh, oh, oh, you know, you oh, know what? Oh, I'm not the one for Mass Effect. Oh, that's, that's oh MJ. no. That's MJ. Oh, no, that's, that's MJ. Don't put me on the um, spot. Actually, I'm just kidding. No, but you know what? I actually would love to do a history on Zelda, too, because I okay. think it's <laughs> I think it's time for us to talk about 
um, Zelda and Zelda and Monster Hunter because each of those games have like kind of certified their place in gaming, and mm-hmm. I think going through their history of learning about each other's games and stuff and why they still stay, why they still stay at all, and why they still matter. I feel like I feel like Monster Hunter had a much harder climb than Zelda did. Zelda was just... Zelda was like an instant classic. It was an instant classic, and even with a divergence, because if you look at if you look at the encyclopedia of the Hyrule, what it, I can't remember how it's what it's called, but there's three divergent timelines, you know, and but they're but they all somehow interlink with each other in certain ways and stuff like that. So I'm I'm more of the the original age that started with Legend of Zelda and then went Link to the Past and that that following, whereas yes. other people are into like the uh, like the 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 64 era. With Ocarina of Time and uh, what was the other, what was the one after that? Majora, Majora's, Majora's Mask. Mask. Majora's Mask, and then they spun off into Twilight Princess. And then there was yeah. a completely and there was a completely third genre that kind of uh, that that the uh, the, the portable versions kind of intertwined between the two of them. Uh, yeah, uh, Link Between Worlds, and then mm-hmm. uh, Min- Minish Cap, um, Phantom Hourglass, Phantom Hourglass, Spirit, Spirit, Spirit Tracks. Uh, they uh, had so, the four swords when they did the port of a link to the past for mm-hmm. the EVA. Yeah. We talked about that in the one V one in the Ross one V one. So do Yeah, so out. you guys you guys are more qualified to do Zelda one. I will definitely do the Monster Hunter one if you guys will have me. <laughs> yes, I, I want to have, I I was just I literally was just like, okay, he's gonna co host or he's gonna host this discussion. And because... and maybe and maybe even the Mass Effect one. Oh yes. <laughs> yes, you and Mallory Coon or MJ Coon with another Zelda podcast. That's one of her favorite series. I would love for both of you to be on there and just have Oh at it. boy. Yes, <laughs> obsessed with Mass Effect. Be- because it was like I told LeBron, I'm like it was because of Mass Effect that I fell into love with BioWare. I did not like BioWare's stuff earlier than that besides Jade Empire. And then when I I had my viewpoint of Bioware, I didn't truly hate them or anything, but their products wasn't for me. I sat down and played that trilogy for Mass Effect and every day I was talking to my friend, why did this happen? Why did I choose this? I'm like, I enjoyed this. I enjoyed that. Uh Mass Effect 2. Mass Effect 2, I I I came away that game speechless. Which just like this this is probably the perfect sci-fi role-playing game ever made in the history of video game consoles you like know what? I, can see even, that. I can see that like i don't like metro metro is its own sci-fi thing and that's separate from mass from mass effect i think i think yeah mass effect 2 is just it may be one of the best western rpgs ever made with mass effect 3 following and probably richard 3 being third Oh, I I would I would say because I love science fiction, I would say Mass Effect two, yes, then Witcher three, then Mass Effect three, and um and I, I I even went through this when we talked the last time on the podcast that you know I have no problems with how Mass Effect the the original trilogy ended, yeah, and the reason and the reason why I had no problems with it is because I played the games back to back to back. I didn't go through the long development cycle everybody else did. So a lot of people who are mad about the outcome of the of the of the overall story, I understand. They were they were passionate and they were plugged in because they had time to let all this all this digest. Whereas I just got in like I got I played them I played them for the entire holiday season of 20, 2012. <laughs> yeah. Cuz I played it on PS3, the mm-hmm. whole trilogy. Mm-hmm. Um and I was just I was Lord, and there was and I, there was nothing I had to forget about because I just mm-hmm. finished the last game, so I didn't have to worry about oh, what did I do? With, what did I do with Caden? What did I do with uh with, with Thane? What what was all this? You know, I, I didn't have to worry about all that. And like and Celeste with Zelda, we how we talked about uh Breath of the Wild trilogy, how we talked about how Twilight Princess got some of the best dungeons, but uh Wind Waker got some of our best bosses. That ghost boss that you have to shake and throw him into the spikes, and then all the ghosts come out and they dance. I love that. I fell out laughing. Just <laughs> Just and why when why when we talk about cell shaded gaze, how Jet Set how Jet Set Radio was oh, the birth of it, my. was the birth of it, and then Nintendo oh. took it and just wowed us. Like you cannot go to E3, have all that hate, and then come out with the game of the year. And still people went crazy and brought it on Wii U. 
That's you know, crazy. You know what? Never underestimate the, the the power of the Nintendo fanboy. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. Y'all, <laughs> hey, yeah, hey, hey, if you have something to say about it, you can catch me on my social media, which you will find out later. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 you know what? It's it's. I, I think right now, just like in gaming in general, there's so many histories on so many series that people have fallen in love, and when you talk to other people and dive in and hear their connection to it and their stories it makes it really makes what these developers and publishers are doing for games really matter and stuff like me and you Laron, we talked about my reason why we had that discussion about monster hunter and everything it's because it was such a niche title when it came out Mm-hmm. It was big in Japan, but America some 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 people in America didn't give a look to it. And now look how it's big in with Master Hunter World across the world. That sounds Here's like a, Fire Emblem. Yeah. Like, yeah. Fire yeah Emblem. But, but you know what, but you know what, I feel like Fire Emblem had a bigger had a had a better run than Monster Hunter did originally. Monster Hunter's mm-hmm. been around Monster Hunter's been around for fifteen years now. Uh how long's Fire Emblem been out? Oh, since Fire the Super Famicom? Did, yeah, yeah. Uh, Fire Emblem has been out since I was maybe uh, maybe game, 20, 20 game, 25 years. Game Boy? Fire game Boy Emblem. events? Uh, oh for for America you mean? No, oh, not for, no no not for America. For how oh. how how long has the series been 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 1990 thing? I think. Right. Okay, so it was Famicom. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like Fire Emblem had a easier run than Monster Hunter did getting picked up outside of outside of Japan. Uh, for the simple reason that you know, the nin- the Nintendo the Nintendo thing. O- honestly, I feel like that's what it is for the most part. Like Nintendo familiarity gets gets a lot of sales, and I'm not saying that in a bad way this time because typically I have my I have my issues with Nintendo stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I I I grew Nintendo a while back, even though I have a 3DS sitting right here on my desk and I have my Switch over there. I I've, I've outgrown Nintendo, uh, you know, overall as a gamer. Um, I matured as gaming matured, basically is the way, the way I'm trying to say it. But mm-hmm. Nintendo familiarity. Nets them sales because there's a lot of games that I have right now for my Switch. Let's 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 take a look here, like real fast. Like if I open up if I open up my my games right now, I have I have Zelda, uh, I have Zelda Breath of the Wild, I have oh I have more on digital, but uh, these are my physical copies. But but yeah, uh, I'm I've got two of the Mario games. I've uh, you know, and and it's just one of those things that Nintendo familiarity gets in their sales. Like even even if their game and and Nintendo first party games are never weak. They're never weak. But mm-hmm. but but when they're not the best, they still sell. Whereas games like whereas obscure games like Monster Hunter cuz Monster Hunter is obscure, it had to work. It had to work up for mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Uh, and things like that. So so yeah, so yeah, just have me on for the Monster Hunter podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Cuz uh yeah, cuz <laughs> in August uh, everybody to let you know, me, Celeste, and our special guest, uh, what's his name again? Uh, his name is Billy Holiday with Retrovaniacs as of now, unless he's able to, uh, he has an assignment for work. As of now, he is yes. highly interested and committed to that episode. Yeah, we are we are going to do a discussion talk on what remains of Eda Fitch, so you guys can join us on that one. Uh, uh, it's available across all the consoles. I think Switch doesn't have it. Maybe Xbox... Does it? I think um, Xbox have it too. Xbox, yeah. PlayStation. I think you can get it on Steam. You can get it on this. Yeah, you can get it on Switch. It. I think mm-hmm. recently was added. To Switch. Wait, which one? Think, wait, which uh, one is this? What remains of Edith Finch? The Walking Sim. Laron. Mm. Laron. Mm. If you if you like you like to write, you said. Yes. If you want a visual novel, which I think no other medium, a book, a movie. This would not have done it justice. If you play this game, I, I have to talk. Ed and I have to talk to you about it because <laughs> it left. I played it in November, and it is already in my top three favorite games. Wow! And I've, okay. been, I've been playing games I for just a little while. I just looked it up. It's been uh, okay. It's been out since 2017. Yeah. Yeah, it's a walking simulator. I mean, I know not that's not everybody's um, preferred way of playing, but what the? Oh, I'm gonna save it for that episode because I could go on about. It. <laughs> okay okay uh, so, just uh, check it out <laughs> yes okay so we are going to have that discussion uh we got more discussions and stuff and you know uh Laron, i'm inviting you back to the pride panel uh we're gonna be doing one of that and you're invited to the black lives uh, matter panel oh. um uh okay. August, yes 
uh, August, I mean, not August, uh, October, I am trying to get the cosplayer panel. Uh, so I'm going to be reaching out for people. So if you guys know any friends or any or anything, have them follow us at Boss Brush Podcast. And hey, hey, will- I, I don't I don't cosplay, but I judge. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh. Well, let let me remind me about that, Ed. Um, there's someone, a local lady who does beautiful cosplays. She works at our one of our local makeup shops. If I, as of, I mean, I don't know with COVID and everything what her her employment status is, but remind me, I'm going to reach out to her, see if yes. she'd be interested. So we're going to get into the show. Uh, <laughs> uh, as usual, uh, Microsoft has did their showcase. Uh, we all have watched it. The, we all have seen people, other people's reactions. Uh, so we're going to bring our own reactions. And what makes this actually special is because I get to hear from Celeste and I get to hear from LeBron what they thought about the show. Um, my my opinions are already out there. Um but I kind of want to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, so, Celeste, I'm going to start with you. Uh, okay. What did you uh, uh, take away from... Well, not take away. Uh, I got to look at my notes. Okay. Um, what was, <laughs> uh, so, I do have a list of games that were shown um, in case... Uh, so, before we go in there, they showed... They announced that Dragon Quest XI S is coming to Xbox One and Game Pass December 4th. Um, Eco Generations... or oh, Echo Generations uh, 2021. Uh, Hello Neighbor 2 is also 2021. Hello Infinite, State of Decay 3. There's a Wonderland game. I forgot to write that down. Uh, and that's from the creator of uh, Yuji Naka from Knights and Sign of the Hedgehog, uh, which is also coming to Switch, I found out. Um, State of Decay 3 for some motorsport ever wild tell me why chapter one august 27th that is the one with the trans character in it uh from don't not um ori 2 for series x uh Pirelle of gorgon the outer the outer wild expansion comes september 9th grounded july 28th that's so that's next tuesday um avow as dust falls psychonauts 2 destiny 2 coming to game pass and ultimate and series x on november 10th um, uh, well, November 10th is for uh, Beyond Light. Uh, Stalkers 2, uh, Warhammer, Dark Tide, Tetris Effect Connected, The Gunk, The Medium, Far, uh, Fantasy Star Online 2, New Genesis, which is also coming to Switch and PS4 and Steam, uh, Crossfire X Campaign with Remedy, and uh, Fable by Playground. Um, so that's just a quick run. Uh, but Celeste, your thoughts? So I, full disclosure, I watched it this morning while eating breakfast because I missed it when it was live but some of the games look really cool i i wrote down some everwild yes absolutely beautiful it looks like breath of the wild i'm very intrigued by the use of magic and healing kind of going back to the the pagan use of magic and and things like that i wonder if that looks like it's incorporated a little bit which is really really neat did, did you guys think it looked pretty cool do you have any interest in everwild everwild gonna, was, let, oh oh go ahead go ahead hey, Lara. i'm just gonna put my i'm just gonna put my disclaimer out there because uh when we talked about the uh this, this the uh the ps the ps5 uh podcast i mm-hmm. i said this uh it's it's i'm a really hard sell when you show me nothing but nothing but just actual trailers and no gameplay and stuff like that mm-hmm. uh i i did put in my notes that it is a visually colorful and striking game though so it's so it's going to be on my watch list but other than the whole fancy element i have no idea what this game is going to be about because because mm-hmm. there was there was just no gameplay element for it and uh and and it's actually it's actually kind of sad because uh, because out of all those games that we just named, there was only three gameplay trailers. Well, two gameplay trailers plus one demo, and that was for Halo. But uh, but I will say this: Everwild looks like one of those games that it's going to be one of those time suckers. Like it's going to like take mm-hmm. all your time away once you start playing it. But I just need to see a little bit more of it. So all right, so I'll pivot back you know to you, Ed. Uh, um, it was it was, it was, it was my highlight of this whole showcase. It was like this is the game that 
even if it comes to Xbox One, if I get a Series X, I'm gonna buy it there. If I don't have my Series X by the time the game comes, I'm, I'm gonna buy it on Xbox One because something about it spoke to me, and it was definitely with the art style. And you know, rare. This is this is a, something that Rare hasn't really done. And mm-hmm. so that's when we were talking about this on Pop Block. I was just like, this looks like a game is to relax you. It's a game about healing by bringing life back and stuff. Um, I like the little dog thing that wrapped his tail around on the tree and he's shaking yeah. and stuff and it's just like that cutesy stuff and it has this it has this it has this japanese well not japanese it has this anime european style to it like mm-hmm. when you're some european and uh europeans are trying to imitate japanese anime but their look is different this mm-hmm. is what it gave me and it was just like the colors are crisp and beautiful and i just mm-hmm. like the trailer music is gorgeous it's one of those trailer music that i'd be like i need the soundtrack to this oh yeah me. like I, it, it was yeah. there are games that when i hear the soundtrack i'm like i need to find out who did this and i want to buy it physically or digitally because i need to hear it and it feels like if rare is going to i hope rare does put this out as a soundtrack too because this is the to me, this is the game that Microsoft needed to show that we are a diverse company that has diverse games for everybody to play. So kids and parents and adults who can't really play our hardcore titles or more mature titles could jump into this fantasy world and just relax and enjoy. So Everwild was like, Everwild just left me like, yeah, I need to have this. And if Microsoft would have more of this, I would leave it like that because in the PlayStation 5 one, there was stuff that was just like ever wild that was just like, oh, it's already on the list to buy. This is the reason I'm yes. getting a PS5 because yeah. I need this. What was that so. one for the plate PS5 that looked kind of like ever wild? I cannot recall it. It looked like it t- took place in a forest, reminded me of the opening of Beyond Good and Evil 2. With the, gr- with the girl. Uh, with, yeah. What was that? What it, was starts it? With oh. it starts with a K. It starts with a K. Oh, God, I can't. I can't remember it, but uh, but I said that that was definitely a day one purchase for me. Yes, uh, because she was controlling the ground and stuff and everything. Yeah, the I know way that the way that game looked though, I was telling people because I actually did a I actually did a reaction video on my YouTube channel for that, and I told people right there I was like, hey, this is what an Avatar, the last Airbender, uh, the last Airbender or or Legend of Korra game would look like if they ever made one. This is how it yes. should, this is how it would and should look. It was so. Kenna, 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 Bridge of Spirits. Kenna, there, yes, yes, yes. That, yes. that it, yeah, reminded that, me of that. Yeah, so that good, good analogies, Laron. I I I, I like that. That is literally on my list of must-have, like without a shadow of a doubt. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not beyond good and evil two. We don't even have that yet. I'm just thinking off to the. What is? Movie why stuff. is it? Why is a game DOA again? I, you, <laughs> I, Look, I, I, don't, I don't. I don't want to cry on air right here. <laughs> I, I, I don't. Understand, I don't understand Ubisoft's focus sometimes because Ubisoft knew back in the PS2 GameCube generation that that game was a hit and, and everybody mm-hmm. wanted a sequel. And then we've had two whole console generations since then. We get one announcement for the game and it disappeared again. I just. I need more. It, I need more. Jay. The only thing. Only thing I could say was because of Ghost Recon Breakpoint being so bad that. Everything got pushed. Now, mm-hmm. I don't know with all these investigations or stuff going on. I don't know if that if that also affected the development of good and uh beyond good and evil too. Because it's a possibility. It was, because it's like I don't care. I respect Watchdog Legions. I want Beyond Good and Evil 2. Because this is what we've been waiting for, that we want to invest our money in. We don't want to invest it in watchdogs because we were burned by the first one. The second one was great, but barely anyone talked about it. And so this one is like, oh, it's another Far Cry slash Ghost Recon wannabe kind of game. All we right, so, had enough of that. All right, so, so if, this, anybody, if anybody from Ubisoft is listening to this podcast right now, this is what I'm going to say. Just like that line in, Resi- in the Resident Evil 3 remake, Beyond Good and Evil will print you money. Mm-hmm. Get that sequel done. <laughs> Yeah, and if you bring it to Nintendo Switch with a physical copy, we'll also print more money. <laughs> right. Yes, yes. I'm just saying, look at limited run games and how they how they grew. Look at them coins that they get in. Uh-huh. Just saying that. Uh, but Celeste, continue. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. So I would so tell me why 
is intriguing to me. It looked more like a movie trailer, though, like how you were saying, Laurent, without the gameplay. Yeah. I, I'm intrigued, but at the same time, I was like, this, how is this going to be a game? I'm, I need to know more. If you've, if, like you, movie. if you've ever played any of the Life is, Life is Strange games, that's exactly, how this, that's exactly how this feels. And I even put in my notes, it feels like it might be a spinoff of Life is Strange. but, but uh, think, Tell me why. Yeah. No, so it's not a part of the Life is Strange. Uh, it's designed that way, but it's not. This is a, supposed to be um, because they had, they talked they announced this. They showed this like years, like two years ago, mm-hmm. and it was they focused that this is going to be a game, going to be the first game that starts a trans character, um, and then everything falls into that. Okay, okay. Um, uh, I. I actually like games of this of this style and this nature. Um, I think of games like Heavy Rain and Detroit Become Human, and these are those are games uh, that, those are games I, that I that I've lost a whole bunch of time on because I played yeah. and I tried to perfect them. And uh, so this one this one stuck out to me. And then when I did research and found out that one of the main characters is is, is a trans character, I was mm-hmm. even plugged into it even more because I was like, you know what? This goes back to that whole representation thing. That we, the the more the more and more people are exposed to this, the more and more it becomes normalized, and we won't have situations like where like trans people are losing their lives and acts mm-hmm. and 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 happenstance situations and things like that. You know, there won't be there 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 be more assimilation of actual LGBTQ people in the in the community and stuff like that i mean it, it's it's gonna be a hard fight removing homophobia from some of our communities but you know it's it's not going i don't think it's going to get the hatred and vitriol that the last of us part two got um because this is one is like they uh, they were up front saying that this game starts a trans character they square saw square enix or don't not i think it's Square Enix was supposed to be publishing this. I'm not sure. But do not say that we are going in this direction and we work with trans people to make this story. So they See, actually work with that and everything. I'm glad you mentioned The Last of Us 2 because I have I have a fundamental flaw with the way people are thinking about The Last of Us 2 and how it gets this visual for its LGBT uh, uh, themes. Did they not play the freaking DLC from the first Last of Us? Like Ellie was already established to be a lesbian in that, in that, and she was a child in in that DLC. <laughs> it's spoiler spo- spoiler alert. Okay, because uh, uh, I can't. What was it? Was it called Left Behind? I can't remember. Yeah. Can't, okay, in that DLC, that's that's a DLC that talks about how Ellie got infected with the virus, and in that whole thing, it wasn't even it wasn't even your your technical Last of Us like gameplay. It was it was a it was a story it was a story DLC that shows you what was supposed to happen with Ellie, and it happened to have her best friend in the game, and in that game, uh, Ellie shared her first kiss with another girl in the game and then something happens ellie is a survivor but she's been bitten that is that's a spoiler for it and i don't understand how fast forward we get to the last of us too and everybody's mad because it, ellie is in a relationship with a woman i don't get do not play the game are you this not is, are you not fans the, of the franchise this is the reason really i feel like it this is more opinion we're going to get back to discussion uh because i have a review out you guys can read it on my switch guys um this is kind of one of the reasons why people have a problem with it a sony cut off people from making any kind of comments with the delays and everything and the spoilers and stuff they stop all the comments and stuff so in order to really piss naughty dog and sony players and everything else off they just went ahead and said all of this stuff they didn't care about trans and homophobia and stuff like that once sony was once sony cut once twitter allowed you to cut off comments uh with it sony did that sony did cut off the comments for them to stay to play or any of their uh comment section on youtube when when sony have re, um, resisted people to say anything uh, for their products or for whatever they show, that angered them. So th- you already know that uh, Ellie is a lesbian. You already seen the kiss and stuff. Even be- yes, with Left Behind. But even at the last press conference before Sony even stopped doing it, when they was at the uh, that little hoedown that Ellie and Dana already kissed and everything. Exactly. So you already seen that, and not one word was said about that during at that time. Okay. So why so? So being resistant not to say anything, you are trying to piss the fucks off at Naughty Dog. 
actually, I don't, I don't really, I don't really, I can, I pick up on some of that you're saying, but I don't actually agree with that because mm-hmm. in the in the history, since PlayStation Two generation and and video games and everything became more mainstream, we've always had embargoes on on what we can preview and put out before games are released. So I don't understand how in 2020 right now, like this is a big deal. Like you're mad because Sony wouldn't let you review the game. You're mad because Nintendo wouldn't let you review the game. So you're gonna so you're gonna tank you're gonna take scores for a game. I haven't played The Last of Us 2 yet. It's it's still it's coming. I'm probably gonna have it done by the end of the summer. But um but my whole thing is my whole thing is I guess I gotta remove I guess I have to remove myself for bias for some for part of it. I'm going to play the game because I love the series. But at the same time Unless I get the game and it is a flawed product, there is no way that I'm going to be mad at whatever decision the writers, the producers, the developers, the talent took to make this game. Mm-hmm. There, the game has to be bad for me to be mad at the game. And 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 in my and in my experience, I played a lot of video games, and there's only been four games I can call bad. I'm not naming them here, but there's four games in all the games I've ever played in my life that I can say are bad games please let other uh, uh, uh metro other m not be on that list i'll just say that it's not, it's <laughs> uh, not. Um, <laughs> um but and, and that's and that's why celeste when i talked about the metacritic thing uh with you where i was just like they are late for doing this they see that they see that breath of the wild was getting trash from users who didn't play the game so this should have already been mm-hmm. implicated so that so that the Last of Us Two wouldn't have to go through it, Look since at, people arguing wouldn't have to go through it. It's 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 weird. It, we're jumping back into the Xbox thing, but go ahead, Laurent. Yes. Oh yeah, I'll just say it like this. Look at what's going on with Death Stranding right now. Death Stranding is getting got horrible reviews when it launched for PS4, but now it's on PC. It's like it's like the gaming community loves it, and I'm trying to. Figure, I'm trying to figure out like, is it because you guys didn't understand? Okay, the ad campaign for Death Stranding, in my opinion, could have been better. It could have been yes. so much better because all the way up to day one of the launch, everybody's like, "What is this game about?" Like they didn't really explain anything. Like we barely saw, we barely saw, we saw gameplay trailers, but we didn't see, but we didn't see anything that gave us like substance to the game. So a lot of people, a lot of people took a chance and pre-ordered the game, you know, because it was Sony and it was and Hideo Kojima. They took a chance and pre-ordered the game on on pure faith. And then there's other people who's like, okay, we don't have that much faith, but we're gonna talk a whole bunch of trash about the game and and kind of force some some narrative on it and stuff like that. And so of course the game comes out, and I can't say for sure if it's game of the year because I'm about to play the PC version real soon. I can't say it's game of the year material, but what I know is uh is is a Hideo Kojima game. You're going to get a whole bunch of metaphysical stuff to make you think yes. about about it. So you know the fact that he did his job. If you were asking all the way through until you beat the game, what was going on? He did his job. It it feels like it's a switch in the community that some of the PlayStation community, not saying all, but some of the PlayStation community were negative on it, and but PC players, the PC community is more receptive to it. So it's 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 weird. I had a conversation with people on social media. Behind that, I I, I said, here's the thing about it: console gamers. Console gamers do not like a lot of change, and the reason why they don't like a lot of change is because the console gaming industry doesn't push a whole bunch of diverse mm-hmm. games at you. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's think about this. Uh, Detroit Become Human. Uh, it's a certified hit. It's a AAA title. It didn't make a lot of sales, but it made enough sales to make to get all these awards. Now compare. Now that's a game that's different from your Call of Duties. Uh, that's different from your your. I'm always, I'm, it's always like I'm always kicking Call of Duty and Battlefield because they are the, they're, but they're, but they're the ones. Like when you have a game that's different from what everybody is used to, it always mm-hmm. has the hardest time getting picked up by the general community. And let's just say it as it is: console gaming is the general community, whereas PC gaming is the niche. Because, uh, you know, like, like we claim we're the PC masters and everything, but we just, we just like our technology. To a point to where we can always enjoy whatever we're throwing ourselves into. That's kind of why I, I, that's kind of why I had to get Monster Hunter World on the PC. Uh, I need to get the best experience I can for it. And yeah, and, and so PC, so PC gamers are more are more resilient and they are more accepting because like look at the look at the millions of indie titles. PC, PC the PC community gets more indie titles than the than all three of the consoles combined. Mm-hmm. 
And, and even before even before PC was getting indies, it was flash games that was on PC. We didn't right. get a flash game. We didn't get a flash game until Ellie and Harmonite come on came on the uh, GameCube. Mm-hmm. All right, that so back. So, oh yeah, so back to Xbox. <laughs> Oh, which reminds me, Lara. Uh, before mm-hmm. we get back to you, Celeste, um, your Monster Hunter gameplay looks faster. Did you put a new chip in? No, no. Uh, <laughs> oh, it looks fa- for some reason it looks faster wait, wait. than your past streams. Wait, wait. Oh, well, actually, I've I've done some I've done some things to actually make my streams uh, perform a little bit better. Um, also, also I learned a couple of OBS tricks, and that's why because uh, like my Monster Hunter stuff has all been on OBS. I was uh, I, up up to a certain point, I was doing it on Nvidia Shadow Play. But now, like I've I figured out a few things, and I'm starting to integrate uh, OBS more into everything. So you're probably seeing a lot, but but some of that, if you're watching the other night when I was when I was fighting that monkey boss, <laughs> yes, that was that was all me. That was all me. That all that dancing around and all that stuff. That that uh-huh. was all me. That wasn't <laughs> that wasn't yes. that, that wasn't hardware tomfoolery. <laughs> Uh, sorry, sorry, Celeste. Uh, because oh, I was no, watching. No. I, I had to read. Oh, yeah, I had, I'm like, I got a chance to tell around this. I'm just like, of course, I'm enjoying the, the Monster Hunter play. I'm like, but this looks smoother and this looks faster. What did he do? <laughs> what, did, what did he do to this? Cause, I did. I, I ran no hacks. <laughs> okay. But back to you, Celeste. I'm sorry. Oh no, gosh, no. I, I love this. I love the free flow like, conversation. Everybody, like I said, this is Boss Rush podcast. <laughs> what we that did. is okay, and. Just to uh, my two cents about reviews, Ed, yours is the only review I think I've ever read because you needed me to edit it. I don't read reviews of games. I don't watch reviews. If I if something looks interesting, I dive in. I, I'm not saying there's something wrong with that if you do it. it. Just for me personally, I don't want spoilers. I don't want to have a preconceived notion about it. If I watch the trailer, if I read the description and it looks interesting, I'm going to try it. I don't care what these Celeste. people who... <laughs> So let's let's meet the bar one night. I'm buying all your drinks. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if that if people want to do that, that's it's a free country. You do whatever you want to do. But I I don't. People who have the time and the energy to spread that vitriol and hatred for right. an art form might want to get a life. Okay, yeah, you know what? I'm glad, I'm glad you mentioned about the uh, about the reviews because I used to I used to I used to be a senior editor for a blog called Pop Culture Shop back in the day, and we mm-hmm. used to do we used to do like game reviews. We did we did everything from video games, music, movies, all that stuff. And I used to do reviews, and and I always told people I always try to make sure people knew. As a matter of fact, in one of the tags, it always said it always said review, and then right behind it said op ed because it is all my opinion. Mm-hmm. You know, I am. The only way I can call myself video game expert is because I play video games, but I am not a video game expert in any in any source of way of the word. So stuff like that. So when I put out a review, I always say this is my opinion of the other 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 okay. game. So if I give it a, if I give it an A plus, it's because I feel it's an A plus game. If I give it an F, it's because I feel like it's an F game. You know stuff like that. Uh, and and. Some people take this stuff too seriously. I understand yeah. some people. For some people, reviewing games is a job. That's how they make their money and stuff mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. But some people take it too seriously because they feel like they feel like if one decision in the game doesn't go the way they want it to go, that 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 decision was aimed at them personally. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, it's just like how people are so mad about the Star Wars, the new Star Wars trilogy. You guys are acting like you own the franchise. It is mm-hmm. not yours. So just like these people who are mad about The Last of Us, these people who are mad at uh, Death Stranding, these people who are mad at, at Astral Chain. This is not your property. If you, if you want to turn around and make Astral Chain, uh, you know, if I want to turn around and make Laron Dawkins Astral Chain, I can do whatever I want with it. And ultimately, I am the only person that's going to be satisfied with my ending. Unless, until you guys out there in the in the ether turn around and say, "Oh, your game is bad," then you're gonna make me feel then you're gonna make me feel some type of way about it. You know, you you have to be a developer. We we even talk about this in our one v one. We let's get back into this Microsoft thing real quick. Uh, <laughs> you when you are creating content, no matter what you do, you are putting your your creation, your uh, your time, your energy, your ideas into something, and to have it criticized when you're not really 
take it apart to explore it to really give it its fair due it's it feels unfair to the creators and stuff so mm-hmm. if you jumping on naughty dog for the last of us 2 and you didn't even spend your 60 dollars to pay, play the game what right do you have to say this because the thing about it is if we find content that you did we have the same right to jump on you and say the craziest nastiest upsetting uh, negative thing about your thing and not play it because you did the same thing to somebody else's work and if you don't want that work uh, if you don't want that to be done to your work you got to respect other people's work other people yeah work. that's so, true so, so, so that's that's, okay. uh, uh, <laughs> anything else uh, before i get to Lauren? i'm oh, sorry <laughs> oh no 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 like i think it's tony morrison or it could be another writer who said if there's a book that's not out there that you want to read write it write, write it, it. <laughs> write it I've, I've heard that line i've heard that line yes so that's uh come at me y'all i don't care <laughs> still, still gotta write exactly. my retail book come at <laughs> exactly. me exactly exactly <laughs> you have that I, much time and energy come at me exactly i don't i, I don't have that time <laughs> and, and, oh well ed can tell you i have that time actually <laughs> <laughs> As long as long as it's not disrupting my work hours, I will answer. I will answer any. I will answer any negative, derogatory, whatever, and let you know, like, hey, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, the, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be very respectful about it. I'm not gonna call you out your name or anything, but I'm gonna let you know how you're acting, and I'm gonna give you the answer you want to. <laughs> and then I'm gonna DM you to get the, uh, to get the gossip. <laughs> so I got like the fool, uh, and, and be shady. He, he oh, I just, I just, I just love how. I just love how I put one tweet out there or, or, on Monday, and with and, and within answering asking three questions, he knew who I was talking about. <laughs> and, and, and the sad part was he didn't even have to read the tweet where all this came from. He was like, "Oh, is it so and so and so and so?" You know, I was like, "Uh, yeah." He's like, "Oh, wow, what did he say?" I was like, "You didn't read it." He's like, "No." Because <laughs> right, I didn't get to see the tweet. I was looking for it. And I didn't get to see it, so I don't know it got deleted. Because I put that's why I put to you. I was just like, no, no, it, didn't to... get, it didn't get deleted. Oh, it's it, still there. It's, oh it's, yeah, I'm it's, like, it's it's still there. I, I'm going to. I will go. I will. Twitter. I will go. I will go find it. I will go find it, and I'll send you a link. <laughs> okay. Because wow, that's like, how that's that's how catty we get. Because <laughs> I'm just like, is is this the Charlie Brown that can do? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Oh man, I think hey, off, off, hey. offline I need some deets. Ed, Ed, Ed said it, not me. Ed said it, not me. <laughs> this. Uh, <laughs> hey, 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 hey! You, you put it out there. I can throw you under the bus all day long. You put it out there. <laughs> Tell me under the bus. I'm like Mario. I could warp down through a pipe. I love it. I love it. Somewhere else. I love it. Uh, uh, but so that's anything else or. Uh, uh, Grounded cracked me up when it referenced cyberpunk. That yeah. is yes. hilarious. Yes. Um, it reminds me of Honey, I Shrunk, I I Shrunk the Honey kids. I kids. Yeah. And then I like the Battletoads Easter egg. It, it looks cute. Right? It looks yeah. so cute. Um, yes. As Dust Falls looks like a visual novel, <gasps> okay. I need to know what happened. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so let's. Does it, does it give you Hotel Dust to Room 213 vibes? A little bit, yeah. It's. Oh, like I want to know. Like, it was just get shot. It was, it was just like this, cause I was excited. I'm like, the sing make this, cause it feels like that game, but in a different art style. Cause mm-hmm. that, that's literally on my list to buy. Yes, and the gunk. All I could think of was Fern Gully. <laughs> oh wow! With a really, with a really dark overtone. <laughs> yes, with a. I did uh, not Robin Williams is not that. in there. Um, I don't think Tim Curry is in this game either. But it reminded me of Fern Gully. I was like, what? What? Am I gonna see some, some fairies? You literally just blew my mind. I did not <laughs> think of that at all. Uh, wow. <laughs> it just, uh, but a cooler, more modern, more badass Fern Gully. That's my I, take. <laughs> I, 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 I have no arguments. <laughs> I, 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 um, those are those are the games that stuck out to me the most. I, I personally don't really play a lot of first person shooters. I haven't since GoldenEye 64. <laughs> hey, hey, no, hey, no shame in that. No, but that that those are the ones that stuck out to me. So, LaRon, I want to hear your thoughts. Yes. Okay, so uh, uh, well, I'll start with what actually blew me away as far as like what they show, what, what they what was shown. Uh, starting with the medium, 
that looks like a type of game that I'm going to get into. That, because uh, when they when they said something about the whole the whole mechanic of two worlds being simultaneously rendered, that to me is like yes, like we want to push technology and stuff like okay, that. So, before you go on, did uh-huh. you thought did you think it was Alan Wake and the Control DLC for Alan Wake? <laughs> you know what? Yes, yes, I did. Because I was watching it, I was just like, this looks like a different character model for. Uh, is this Alan Wake? I was literally confused. And when but, they showed up, I'm like, oh, yeah. But it's not a Remedy title, though. It's not. But yeah. it, the way that it came, the way that they showed it, it looked like uh, Alan Wake is still the thing because that's supposed to be the new DLC for Control. They're suppo- she's supposed to go back to oh, Alan I did not Wake. know. I did not yes. know that. So that's why when we was watching it, me and Jesse was watching it, we were like, what is this? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You know that all makes sense now. Uh. So yeah. So the medium definitely one I'm gonna keep my eyes on and and, and probably jump on that on launch. Uh. Another one was uh was the gunk. Also, I have I have my eye <laughs> yes. on that one too. Um. And and, and to that everybody know this is from the creators of Steam World Steam World Dig. So um, it's a must buy. Like that that's a given. I love the Steam World Dig games. Okay, and uh, and also because I I had three of them. I, my third one, which this, this third one's gonna sound kind of generic, but uh, but Crossfire X, Crossfire X from Remedy, Remedy Entertainment is something they is some is a genre they haven't really messed with before, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. Some of the things that some of the I like I I want to play it because uh, I'm not really like a big fan on like the first person shooters as well, and you know especially like uh, like the last first person shooter I actively picked up and played was uh was modern was the first Modern Warfare, uh. But there's something about Crossfire X that, that kind of gave me those those chills, and I want to do it again. Uh, but there's also some that I also have some questions, like uh, like explain to me what's going on with the single player content because apparently it's supposed to be sold separately and it's not part of Game Pass. Like what? Huh? Like okay, what? Okay, so so uh, so when it initially came out, it was a multiplayer game, and so Xbox had the exclusive to it. Uh, because it's only been in peace on PC, like I think in China or Japan or something. But it was it had always been a big hit. Wait, wait, so um, this is not this is not a new game. No. No. Oh. This this campaign is completely new because it was only a multiplayer see, game. See, and see, Remedy okay. Right, okay. and Rem and Remedy is helping them to make this campaign because the uh, the creators they didn't know how to make a campaign of it. Okay, well, I'm calling shenanigans then on, on, on this whole ex, on this whole Microsoft uh, showcase because they were like they were like uh, world premiere, uh, console launch exclusive. So I'm sitting here thinking that this is a brand new game. So, they showed uh, so, this. So they showed boom, this at, Microsoft. Uh, yeah, they showed this at Microsoft's 2018, 2018 or last year's E3 conference. Because they made it, it be, a big deal. Had to be 2018. Deal. Had to be 2018. Okay. Because they, yeah, they made it a, such a big deal, and everybody was just like, "What the world is this?" It's like it was this big trailer and stuff, and then you looked at the game, you'd be like, "What PlayStation 3 graphics game is this?" Like, okay. who did who didn't finish? This? It feel like they put they put it in Unity, and they're just. You know what? I'm glad you I'm glad you just said something about about PlayStation graphics, because uh, I was let down by Halo Infinite. Okay, and Halo Infinite, they said that was an early build. So uh, oh whoa 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 have have we not learned anything from um from Watch Dogs that shenanigans? <laughs> have we not learned anything? You. <laughs> hey, so it was a, so it was an early build because they, that's that's, what, that's the, why that would, was the rumor of it. Why would they lead with that? Because when I watched it, I was like, uh, this looks like a PS. This looks like a PS3 game. I think they wanted to give an idea of what you'll be doing, some new mechanics and stuff. That you to give you an idea of what you'll be doing in this Halo in this Halo game. And I think they weren't they weren't thinking about how it's going to look well and everything. Well, you know, now we have a problem because when Halo Infinite comes out, I I better see a product that's pushing the teraflop so that Xbox Series X console. It, this is the thing. This is their new engine. This is three four three studios new engine. So <laughs> it's I don't. I uh, this I is feel my a, thing. I feel a Mass Effect Andromeda situation happening again. Well, we we'll see. Cause my thing is, uh, you guys are very creative. You got twelve, fifteen, whatever, how many studios? Y'all got these teraflops. You need to be on the level. <laughs> I got these teraflops. You got these teraflops. It, it better not flop. 
That's all I got. Exactly. <laughs> Look, you have to, you have got to be on the level of Gorilla Games. Their Gorilla Games engine that made Detroit become human, that made Horizon Zero die. Everybody at Sony could jump on Gorilla Games engine and use it for their for their games. That's what 343 Studios with this that trailer for Infinite Halo Infinite when they started was gorgeous to yeah. introduce what that engine is. Well, and this, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. This, I'm like, this, this is not. Yeah, this should not be the level of Duke Nukem Forever. <laughs> it should not be on that level. Okay, see, you're you're mean because Duke Nukem Forever. <laughs> I wasn't gonna make that comparison, but you are mean, sir. <laughs> but no, I'm just saying you you shouldn't be on that level. That engine that engine looks like it's going to look wonders with Here's, somebody who could really use it. You know what? I I I I put I put Mass Effect and Andromeda out there, but you know what? I would have been happy if. Halo Infinite's gameplay in that demo look like Mass Effect Andromeda graphically wise, not play yes. gameplay wise. You know, because I was looking, I was like, really, guys? R- really? Like this honestly looks like a PS3 era game. Like, I mean, I, I what was what was a hot PS3 title? Uh, because oh. because because that's what it looked like the time period that this that this game has been developing in. I would say probably Uncharted Two. Or Uncharted no, it looks 3. no, it looks worse. GTA than Uncharted Five II. was a that was okay. Uh, uh, GTA. Uh, okay. Okay. Sleeping so dogs. We're, we're still being sleeping dogs. Okay. You know what? Sleeping dogs looks, in my opinion, looks worse than Halo Infinite. But spec up the line. Okay. You know what? That'll work. Uh. Uh. Here's here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. And I hope someone from Microsoft and 343 Studios is listening. You know, you guys, you guys can come talk to me if you want to. Uh. I as a as a consumer, I will definitely. I, I'm not gonna tell you how to sell your game, but I'm gonna mm-hmm. tell you what will work for like how the gaming industry has evolved. Because because in the world, in the day and age of Twitch and all and all and YouTube game streaming and stuff like that, now people expect games to look a certain way. And for and for games and for a game that's on this fifth generation. Of it of of his life con of his life cycle like with Halo, this game cannot this uh, Halo three cannot look better than this game. That's all I'm going to say. I was going to say Far Cry three. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Far Cry three. Yeah. Um. Ultimately, like you know, like the demo, the Halo Infinite, and and I'm a hard sell anyway because I haven't played a Halo game seriously since the first one on the original Xbox. Halo has always been a hard sale for me. Halo, because I had friends like I bought it. I bought an Xbox console just to play Halo with them, mm-hmm. and and I was one of the first ones to stop playing. Um, so Halo has always been a hard sale for me. So so when I saw the social media uh, reaction during at the beginning of the show, everybody was everybody was cheering about Halo Infinite, and then all of a sudden the next day it was quiet. I was like, what happened? <laughs> and then I saw the showcase, and I was like, oh, that happened. <laughs> and- and and the thing about it is I'm not I'm not knocking Halo Infinite because it's a must buy. It, it to me it's a given. I'm already sold on getting the Series X. I'm already sold on oh, getting Halo Infinite. Oh, oh and, look at you. And, and and that's because not only am I a podcaster or anything like that, but I love games and I feel like Microsoft is working hard to, uh, Microsoft is working hard to have people play their products anywhere and everything mm-hmm. and so to to have that i i respect their honor it and i rather you know support that and be that's able to talk I, around that's what uh, i love right. about how they're doing game pass now mm. i didn't even want to jump on game pass and, until uh streets of rage came out i didn't even want to jump on it and i'm so glad i have game pass now after seeing the showcase like oh you give it to me let me have it <laughs> and see yes yeah it's this is the thing about it. I think with people who have Ultimate, definitely people who have Windows 10 and Steam, if the game do not look up to snuff on Series X, they're going to make it look up to snuff on PC. Yes. <laughs> and trust me, the PC player community, they are not going to play a round. They're going to, this going to the, be the point that even Digital Foundry is going to take notice and be like, see, this oh. is the comparison. You know what? I'm so glad you mentioned Digital Foundry because when they were talking about Ori Will the Wisp, the special edition, mm-hmm. and when they were talking about how it's going to have like new uh, new frame rates and um and I think they said it was going to be um I thought they said it was going to be flawless frame uh flawless uh 120 FPS. The first thing I put in my notes is I'm like Digital Foundry is going to have a field day picking this apart because that's the first thing they're going to look at. They're going to look at is this game dropping frames, stuff like that. So uh, so you guys have some work for you guys. <laughs> I 
I, I literally would say this, and I stand by the coalition. They're the ones that I, if I'm trusting any of Microsoft's first party to do 120, I'm trusting the coalition to do it. If okay. not that, the people who are doing the Forza, Forza Horizon 5, if that, Forza Horizon 5, if that is running in 100 in 120 frames per second, that's going to be insane. And I'm a little... I, those are only two I stand by. Oh, and, uh, and, and um, Ninja, Ninja Theory. But Ninja Theory. I, like I'm a whore for Ninja Theory, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm 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 a little I'm a little cynical because I've I've I played I've I played some games that you know have burnt me when I felt when I felt like they honestly shouldn't have burnt me the way they did, mm-hmm. and so like I get really cynical about games that when they when they sell when they when they try to sell us on hype features, you know, and and that's a uh, something I learned in the um in the realm of business I'm in is is features features tell uh features tell but benefits sell. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh-huh, so, uh-huh, so uh-huh. you can, you can throw at me all day about 120 frame, uh, frame per second frame rates, uh, 4k HDR, uh, low latency input. These are all words that they said in the Ori will the wiss uh, special edition, uh, portion of it. And, and I put, I put it on the sidebar cause I wrote all this down. I was like, question mark, was it necessary? I feel like, I feel like honestly, the developers could be spending their time making a new AAA title cause they've already got a sequel to Ori out. Why are they rehashing this game? They can because put, they because they, can, they oh go ahead oh sorry because they kind of want to show what happens when backwards compatible is somewhat being played and that everything they're saying uh but this is the this is the real question you can are you going to be doing Xbox One X where you have people choose this stuff because it's 120 for a game that's not really artistic in 3D environments like it's not like a real like Gears 5 game this is a 2D hand drawn looking somewhat game so yeah you could bring that up to 120 can you do can you do Halo 5 which is like artistically in 3D, like even with the CG stuff, can you get that to 120? Because if Ori's only doing 120 and Halo 3 is only doing, no, Halo, Halo 3, if if Halo Infinite is only doing 60 and Beyond Light with Destiny is only doing 60, how in the heck is that for a powerful system, why they're doing 60 and, and Ori 2 is doing 120? Okay, you know what? I'm glad you say that because, I, because to answer that question, that fractures their community. It does because because and that's and that's honestly the reason why a lot of people have have like gone to PC gaming mm-hmm. because because they want to get they want to get the the smoothest gameplay out of it and some and there's a lot of times you see clipping in games where like you're doing something and you see the frame rate drop vi- visually and you're like wait well huh like how's this happening and you know, stuff like that and it, and stuff like that will disrupt your gameplay and your enjoyment of it and stuff like that so when you ask that question. There is a possibility it will fracture the fan base uh, because you're gonna have Xbox, you're gonna have Xbox Series X owners who have, who have, who play games like Ori, which are supposed, which are supposed to run at 120 FPS, and then when they go and play another game, it's like, wait, why is this game running slower than the other game? Because that's the way it feels when you go from a when you go from a 60 frame per second game to a 30 frame per second game, it feels like your character's moving around in mm-hmm. mud. That's why, that's why, that's why you know as much as I love the Gears of War franchise, I could never take it seriously because it always feels like that guy is just sludging, <laughs> you know, as opposed to where like you know a game like Call of Call of Duty, for example, those guys are running fast or sprinting. Yeah, it's it's the it's the Titanfall two versus Destiny thing. You play Titanfall two and see how fast and quick the movements and everything you do in that game, and then you play Destiny and it's just like, what a Tyrant twenty six hundred HD version is this nonsense. <laughs> So and that's not not to shade Destiny because I think it's great that that's coming to Game Pass with Beyond Light and, and stuff like that. And I I try not to shade Destiny because I I I, I played the demo on Xbox and PS4. I got the game when it came out. I'm kind of currently up with the DLC, but I need to play it. Um, so I support Destiny and I'm glad what they're doing now. It's just that now that you guys are not with Activision. I hope that 60 frames is everywhere. Give me a patch update so that 60 frames could be on my series. Here's, Not Series X, but my, but my what's name. Here's my, here's my thing. Like I feel like 60 frames per second should have been a norm back mm. during the PS3, Xbox One. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, 60 frames should have been a, been a PS3, uh, Xbox 360 thing, and it definitely should have been a PS4, Xbox One thing. Yes. Uh, uh, you know the fact that the fact that you know Monster Hunter World on the consoles is locked at 30 frames per second. 
and you see the difference, especially when you, especially when you jump on a stream and you see the difference. You know, it's like, it's like, come on, guys! Like, Monster Hunter runs natively on 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 the on the PC at sixty frames per second. You're telling me that the that the consoles can handle this, and we know the consoles jump back and forth between thirty frames and sixty frame games. It all depends on how the developers are feeling. I, I told I told LeBron that I was playing it on console. We had we literally had that discussion on why this game looks faster and smoother on PC. And then I played my the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox version. I'm just like, goodness, this uh-huh. this doesn't look compare this is miles beyond like lacking than the PC yeah. version. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, it's bad to say that. Uh, I feel like developers need to make the exact same experience across everything. If you're going to yes. if you're going to multi platform release switch Xbox, mm-hmm. Sony, uh, PC, if you're going to multi platform release these games, they all need to be playing to a certain standard. And, and, and standard right now for current video games, 60 frames per second. 60 mm-hmm. frames per second, uh, f- uh, full full high definition. So 1080p, 60 frames per second. We still got games that are coming out at 720p. Mhm. And we and we as Switch owners, we understand that Witcher and stuff it, is is not the best version to play. We already know that, but we are still we're there for the experience. And if it could still run in handheld and on. If we get the experience and it still could run without no problem, that's all we care about. That's man, literally all we care about. We know man, that this is not powerful. I saw Digital Foundry's breakdown of uh, Burnout Paradise, and I was like, man, do I need to buy this game again for the Switch? Because <laughs> I had, I got it on PS3. I almost bought it for PC. <laughs> and now <laughs> they're thinking, do I need to buy it on Switch? If you want to play it uh, on any, the go. <laughs> exactly. Anything else, uh, Laura? Tell me why. That's another game that I'm definitely probably going to mm-hmm. I'm definitely probably going to get. Uh, 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 before you go, oh Celeste, for next for Plavbach, uh next week, um, Breath of the Wild two or Breath of the Wild three running on uh, Real Engine five on Switch. Think about it. We'll talk next week. <laughs> Remind me because I'm old and I forget everything. <laughs> oh, oh, stop it! Oh, stop right. it! No, it's just just up. Uh, there's so video game news just moves so fast. So. Yes. Oh, that's that's the truth. Like I'm, I'm part, <laughs> like I work as an IT guy, so it's kind of my wheelhouse okay. and stuff like that. And I and I miss a whole bunch. I miss a whole bunch of stuff. Like someone asked me the other day if I uh, if I had seen this announcement for this game. I can't remember what game it, it was. I can't remember what game it is now. And I was like, no, like there's news for it. Like yeah, you new the thing. I'm like no. <laughs> it's hard to keep up. Yeah, I, I want to talk about this next week though, Ed. And I'm. You're gonna have to remind me, like, be my little red ribbon on my finger. Because <laughs> I was just thinking about, I was just thinking about it. Like, Unreal Five is coming to everything, even Switch next year. But for the Wild ran on Unreal Engine Four, Nintendo like really blew my mind. What would they do with Unreal Engine Five or in a Switch Pro? Oh, baby it, Jesus! You know what? I do like, I do like Nintendo's approach now. They're Nintendo is now becoming early adopters of everything. I guess, mm-hmm. uh, and you know, I, maybe it's maybe it's to correct the new the new president that, uh, that Nintendo has. Uh, yes. Maybe he has it, and not saying anything bad about uh, who was it, Iwata? Was that the uh, Iwata? Yeah. Iwata not saying bad. anything bad about Iwata. Not at all. You know, you know, rest his soul and everything. Uh, I, I, but if Nintendo had been doing this back right after my downfall for Nintendo started with the Nintendo sixty four. That's kind of when. Downfall. Yeah, that's that's when I really? outgrew. That's when I outgrew. That's when I I realized I'd outgrown Nintendo. Mm-hmm. They got me back with the GameCube, and they 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 and they coaxed me back with the Wii because they put a Monster Hunter game on it. But uh, <laughs> but but ultimately, like it got to a point where the only thing I feel Nintendo was doing right was handhelds. So like I wasn't spending money on the consoles, like uh like it, and the only and I I feel, I I feel like some days like my friends even joke about it. They're like the only reason why you got a Switch is because it's portable. And I was like you know you might be right, but I had a whole bunch of games for it. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 we talked about Iwata. Iwata was trying to change Nintendo for Yamu. I think Yamauchi. I think he was the president. Um, mm-hmm. he had a certain way of how he di- was directed Nintendo, and successful or not, it was it wasn't what it. It wasn't what Iwata had in mind. Iwata literally changed it. It just really tried to open this stuff and really listen to everything. So I think um, in that culture, oh, because I, I I lived I lived in Japan for six months. I taught English over there, and that culture, as progressive as it is, 
there's still some just in general, especially with a lot of older people, wait, older wait, wait, generations. Wait, wait. I thought I thought Iwata was the recent president of Nintendo that passed away. Who was the one that passed away? It was Iwata. Iwata. Okay. Iwata yeah. You got it. You got okay. it. Okay. 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 Yeah. When, just, when uh, Yama, yeah. Yeah. When Yamauchi passed away, they were still trying to find someone, and then mm-hmm. Iwata took over. Um, because yeah. it was part of GameCube that he was president, uh, or half of GameCube's life cycle, I think. And then when he jumped into Wii, Iwata was fully CEO, president of Nintendo, okay, uh, okay. before he passed. Away. So, okay, and, well, and I, I, I think was confused that, for a second there. I was like, wait, what? Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, did, I, did, yeah. did I just, did I just kill somebody that wasn't dead? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Poor, poor thing. No, he had, um, no. it was like a gallbladder, yeah, uh, situation, yeah. like some yeah. kind of bile duct cancer yeah just that that culture is is a little bit set in its ways in some ways it they mm-hmm. like it kind of like well we've always done it this way or we have to do it this way very methodical which is not necessarily bad all the time but do you think that well i don't know ps5 and that's in japan too hmm, maybe it's just nintendo well here's the thing about it. sony's a tech sony's a technology company mm-hmm. like so, as far as yeah, as far as I can tell, Sony has always been like technology. Nintendo was more of a. I want to say Nintendo was what a more of a um, entertainment, but they also did like products. They also did like I think they had like a red light district hotel or something like that. <laughs> um, they was sorry, the, sorry, the plane, parents. <laughs> the, the playing the playing cards. They were they were considered mm-hmm. as an entertainment company, but yeah. they also did some other stuff on the side. So they weren't always like a technical company. They were always like creating the, ideas the, yeah. and innovations and stuff. The reason why I do not hate Nintendo is because Nintendo is what actually reignited my love for gaming. It was like I, we we spoke about it in the 1v1 where it was like, you know, my parents got me an Atari 2600 a year before the crash. <laughs> And wow. then, you know, there were no more video games for a good long while. Arcades were still a thing, but there were no yes. more video games, you know. And then Nintendo, like, I, we, uh, like, one day, like, I show up at a friend's house. They had the NES, and we're playing Super Mario Brothers. And I was like, um, mom, dad, <laughs> hey, 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 parents, hey, 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 uh, hey, I'll walk the dog and, and, and mow the lawn. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I think uh, I, I know a lot of people when I was in high school, like when the GameCube was out, a lot of people <sighs> critiqued about like the being too family friendly, too hesitant. Like it was people were surprised that things like Resident Evil remake and Resident Evil 4 Eternal Darkness. I think I think were there some, was like Mafia maybe on GameCube. <laughs> I was actually uh, I was actually shocked when Nintendo started putting M rated games out mm-hmm. on the GameCube because they were really squeamish about doing it before. But mm-hmm. M rated games was on Super Nintendo when Mortal Kombat 2 came out. This is true. This but is they censored true. the they censored the crap out of Mortal Kombat though. Uh, wait, wait, the first one. Oh, the Mortal first Kombat one, yeah. 2. Mortal Kombat oh. 2, they got uh, they got into the random board, and that's when they allow M-rated games to come to their systems. So okay. there's always been M-rated mm-hmm. games, and Nintendo never stopped anybody. It's just that the third-party publishers were not putting out, and Nintendo themselves oh, we can, weren't putting out. We can have a conversation about Nintendo and the rest of it with third-party developers. We 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 can save that for another day. <laughs> we, we we shall save it because I have thoughts. <laughs> I have. <laughs> Do you have receipts? I have tons of because <laughs> Fighting Force on PlayStation was. I'm mad that that game took my birthday money. <laughs> I, I loved it for the N64. Yeah. Fighting Force was really good. For, so it's not good mm-hmm. on PlayStation. Leron, anyone? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we'll okay, save okay, that okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Just to answer Celeste's question. The reason why Fighting Force was a much better, stronger game on Nintendo 64 is because Nintendo 64 decided, like, five years into its lifespan, we're going to drop this uh, 64 expansion uh, cartridge out. And that made all their games run so much better. And technically, it's also something the Sega Saturn did. The Sega Saturn released a RAM cart, and all of a sudden, all these games that were that were, that were were okay were now arcade perfect. And that's the problem that Fighting was, Force... Was that- was that the like that game genie thing that everybody or that was no that was the it was import. A, the, it was uh, the, yeah you imported it. like if you bought if you bought if you bought certain games I remember like the like the as far as I remember Sega Saturn was the first system that you didn't have to do any trickery to like play like like uh no, other region games no you had to do trickery because was you there? Had that yeah because then that ramp cart you had to have like oh yeah, like right. something like a game genie to do it 
Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. The... There was there was a trick with the RAM card. The RAM the trick with the RAM card is like you uh like you you turn on the game, you turn on the system with the RAM card in there. You put your game in, and you put your disc in, you close the lid, and while the disc is spinning, you yank the RAM card out and then put it back in right before the system the OS has time to recognize the disc is in there. Okay. Because that's, that. that's almost I, I, on like the PlayStation one where you had to load the load the game, but like take it out somehow, put some kind of pin thing to hold it, put yeah. the Japanese game in, and then it'll read the Japanese game like you was tricking it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I stuff. remember it now. I remember it now. But because uh, because uh, when I found out about that RAM cart, I immediately bought, I immediately imported a copy of uh, X Men vs Street Fighter. Yes, yes, that was the first game that everybody did it. Yes, I immediately imported that, and then every other Capcom fighting game that I had before that, <laughs> Dark, Dark Stalker, Street Fighter Alpha <laughs> Two, uh, all those fighting games, put that RAM card in there, and your game played arcade perfectly. Uh, animate. It's funny because like you were like you you would think because the way those games played, like they were just missing animation frames. No, they were there. They were just blocked because of the limitations of the RAM. Yeah. And that's so you're like, wait, because uh, uh, what's the uh, Street Fighter Alpha 2 uh, gen stage with the water and stuff? Like you can yeah. you, you can see your reflection in the water. What? If you have if if you have that RAM card, the only other way you could see that that's is if you played cool. the arcade version. Yeah. Yes. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's why we, we may not. Okay, so that was those are all my what that's what I liked. Wrong. Those are because <laughs> I'm a freaking nerd. I'm. So, <laughs> That's, there's nothing wrong. We went with through that. the same thing. So, uh, so well, okay, thanks, right. Laura. That, was all, uh, that, that was all my what what I liked from the showcase. Okay. That was all of mine. And and the kind of almost the same thing, uh, because uh, you know, the one game like I said that I I would take away is Everwild. So that's what was your one game take away? Uh, oh gosh, as dusk falls, honestly, because I am just the way it was presenting it, that mm-hmm. mystery. I want to know. I want to know. Like, uh, I, I know now what happened. Uh, what about you, Laura? Uh, after after learning some information about Crossfire X, it's now shifted to the medium. <laughs> yes. yes. Medium does look really cool. Yeah. yeah. Really I, I, cool. I, I, I think me and Jesse are definitely going to buy that. That's one of, that's up our wheelhouse and stuff. But everybody, that is our thoughts about Microsoft Showcase and other things about gaming. Because <laughs> uh, we have a special discussion, and I'm so happy to do this. It's time for us to snack it up, snack it up, snack it up. <laughs> yes, we are talking about snacks, everybody. We are going to give I, our three I think favorite they already snacks. Saw me. I think they already saw me, like, snacking it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I, I see you eating those gummy bears on shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I did, it's, I did it's, uh, it's try to. It's killing my gains. <laughs> <laughs> I did, like, the Smurf ones. The Smurf ones was really good. I did enjoy I, that. I have, had, I've had, I have had a bag of them now. Yeah, they are, they are awesome. Uh. I was wondering should I get should I go back and try the sour ones because we got the sour ones too in Wisconsin. The sour the sour Smurfs. Yeah. Interesting. I haven't seen those. I didn't know they existed. Yeah. If um uh, if I go back, I'll send you some. Uh, okay. So uh we're gonna talk about our three favorite snacks, our three favorite meals, our three favorite desserts, and what item that without no question we just have to have we see it and we just like screw our diet screw our trainer screw <laughs> our blood pressure I'm <laughs> <laughs> so, um, talk to your doctor before indulging guys we, we don't want to be responsible for anybody and, uh, uh, in advance i apologize to you Laurent, and your trainer uh because of this makes you hungry or anything uh i know you was going on a zero sugar calorie thing as, uh, I, as i as i eat a two pound bag of gummy bears yeah oh haribo <laughs> the best the best yeah so uh i i, I don't want to tip you or for you to get off track uh because you are on a great journey uh, like I said, I love the thirst that you gave this morning. I was quenched. Uh, I had to, I had to leave, but then I saw the picture again, and I had to go get some Kool Aid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we're actually going to start with you, Laron. Uh, what are your three favorite snacks? My three favorite snacks. Okay, in in this order, in this order, uh, lifesaver, lifesaver gummies, 
Snickers doesn't matter what version, what what form of Snickers. It can be the bite size Snickers. It can be the king size Snickers. It can be the ice cream Snickers bars. It can be the peanut butter ones. It can be the almond ones. It can be the crunchy ones, the the ones that have the little rice crisps in them that every now and then they show up and you know limited runs. Uh, with the exception of the white chocolate ones, I don't like that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the white, chocolate, the white chocolate Snickers is a little bit too much. Um, I've never seen the crispy Snickers. I've never they, seen them. It's not, it's not like it has a layer of like the Rice Krispie on it. Like it's more mm-hmm. like it has clusters inside that replace the actual peanuts. Uh, every now, <sighs> every so often, it's shown it shows up, uh, and it shows up and it's in square form. It's not in the candy bar form. Okay. Uh, um, and uh, so yeah, so lightsaber gummies. Uh, the Snickers, uh, the, uh, any version of Snickers, and uh, my my other favorite snack is actually just a uh, 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 not uh, freaking kettle corn, kettle corn popcorn. Oh, that is so good. <laughs> yeah, kettle corn popcorn. <laughs> yes. I, I, I got excited. When I when I when I get that when I get that wild need for some, I'll just go downstairs and and throw some sugar in the pot and and pop some uh, pop some whole corn uh, corn kernels and kettle corn instant. Mm. Ah, yes. Good stuff. Celeste, what are your three snacks? <laughs> I can't, I can't so believe you excited. made me like pick my children or something. That's what you're doing. <laughs> okay, so it's a tie between Twizzlers and Sour Candies, Ooh. especially the Twin Snakes by Haribo. Ooh. If you guys have never had yes. Twin Snakes by Haribo, okay, missing out. I will. I will buy some at work because I we have them at work and I've never tried them. The twins. <gasps> oh, 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 God. The twin snakes are so good. How about, so the, how about the cherries? How about the cherries? Oh my God. Those are good too. Those oh, are good. Just buy them all of Haribo at your store. <laughs> and just okay. all so, of them. <laughs> so we have, so it may start tomorrow at my job. We might do, like, cause we normally do like two for two for two or two for four. Yeah, um, I know. I know. And so, <laughs> uh, I'm very aware of that deal. <laughs> So I will pick up some, I, yeah, because I haven't been really eating candy this week. Mm-hmm. I've, I've been a good boy, uh, oh, but today oh, I'm being. Oh, oh, I'm you're, being, you're but, awesome, because I, 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 I've fallen off the wagon. I'm surprised I haven't gained weight. You were, you were getting ready for the snack episode. That's all. <laughs> that's all you were doing. You're you were awesome. doing your homework. Thank you. You, you get me. Thank you. I understand. <laughs> I, uh, my fate. Okay, for something refreshing, I love cantaloupe. <gasps> mm, mm. love it now do you guys do this my mother does this with melons like with um cantaloupe and watermelon she puts salt on it she says it brings out the sweetness i have never done that before yeah i don't do this but I she just, says yeah it brings she out told the me this less i'm glad she does put the salt and i how much salt are we talking just like just a cup a sprinkle yeah. okay not like a fine layer like how oh, like, like like you're no. about to, like you're about to prepare like you're about to grill salmon or nothing like no no <laughs> okay. like just be sprinkle you don't know i think that would defeat the purpose <laughs> 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 it's like it's like it's like we cut your sugar of high blood pressure <laughs> yes yes exactly i think we sell like cantaloupe pieces and stuff like that mm-hmm. at work i so i think i'm gonna buy some i have some salt downstairs i think i'm gonna try some of that tonight so refreshing. Um, and then it's a tie between kettle corn and salt and vinegar chips. Not together, <laughs> not mixed together, but I love salt and vinegar chips. You know, oh. there was a, there was a time when you couldn't pay me to eat salt and vinegar potato chips, but now I, I will say this: since uh, since I've since I've gotten more physically physically fit, I will say, and like I do stuff like run. Well, mm-hmm. my my trainer makes me run like three or four miles every so often, so like that. I mm-hmm. see that shady. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I I absolutely hate running and right now because my trainer is trying to get me somewhere it's the whole hey we gotta run i know you hate it but we gotta run and and he and he does he does what he can to cheer to cheer me up and and because uh i hate distance running i can sprint mm-hmm. you know and do short distance use mm-hmm. like sh- like short junkets all day long as a matter mm-hmm. of fact a 440 meter is probably about the most i want to run that I can run fast and be competitive about it but you tell me i'm gonna run 5k it's like uh oh i'll get there <laughs> <laughs> Endurance, endurance is rough. That's that's some it's rough less. stuff. This is this is how messy it was yesterday. So Thursday night, uh, I'm watching Laurent stream and stuff, and he's getting off the street, and I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna go play Paper Mario. Everybody have a good time, and you know, uh, Laurent's just like, yeah, everybody, this is gonna do for me. I gotta be up at 5:45. You know, I'm like, okay, so he has to get up and go to work. 
Friday morning come and you see this picture of him laying in the bed looking groggy and upset. Be like, can I sue for having to get up to run? And I was just like, oh. is this the reason why you got up at 5.45? Let me turn to the turn back. But then I looked Dang. again. And hold on, Dang. hold on. But before I went to bed, because I'm guilty of this, I hearted it. And then I went back to bed. <laughs> You are. I was, a, I was, I was about to jump. That would put me back. in a bad mood too. <laughs> That's I'm too thinking. Funny. I look. I'm thinking. LeBron's getting up to go to work, and I was just like, he has to get up and go run it. Not, not 5:45 a.m. <laughs> but you ah. knew that you had to do it. That was the thing. Discipline. It. Lots of discipline. Well, I mean, I mean, right now, right now. Okay, let me preface that because it sounds like it sounds like I'm lazy. But the but no. the, but the problem is is that right now Monster Hunter is in the middle of an event that's going on for a month. So every day I got on, every day I've been getting on, and I've been doing what's called the daily the, the daily bounties, which basically is like your just your daily your your daily requirements to get certain certain rewards and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So I've been doing that. At the same time, I've been helping a couple of buddies like level up. Mm-hmm. And so normally my stream schedule is usually Mondays and Wednesdays from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, and then and then Friday Friday and Saturdays are to be determined. Sometimes I will and sometimes I won't stream on Fridays. But Friday but Saturdays I'll I'll, I, I'll probably get off of this podcast soon and, and start streaming. Uh, and then Sundays is back to my normal 9 to 11 schedule. Okay. Uh, but because this daily thing, I'm like, oh, if I'm gonna be playing Monster Hunter every day, I might as well just stream it every day. Nice. Every time Very I get nice. on stuff like that. Smart. So. Very so yeah, so yeah, so it gets to a point where it's like, okay, I, so I get my dailies done, then I help crush out a crush out a couple of missions on the grind, and next thing you know, I look, it's like almost midnight, and it's like, uh, tomorrow's a workout day. I gotta be, I gotta see my trainer at seven a.m. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's not that I'm lazy or nothing. You're not lazy. lazy. It was just, it was just the photo and the wordy that just made me fun out laughing. I was just dying. It, I love it. Which is, uh, I love Ron. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like this foolishness. I'm like, but I will give him a love. <laughs> I will give him a like. So I'm guilty of it. All right. So, so all right. So Eddie, what's your what's your what's your three favorite snacks? Oh, my three favorite snacks. Uh, I'm so happy to be doing this. So, of course, without a shadow of a doubt, honey buns. Mm. Ooh, honey buns. buns, cinnamon buns, frosted buns. The because the hosty frosty ho, the hosty cakes frosty buns are not available, I have to do the uh, uh crispy cream ones. Mm. You talking about sweetness? Who? A little too, mm-hmm. little like intense, huh? I have to, I literally have to buy milk every time mm-hmm. I get one of those because they're just so. Mwah. You know, as much as as much as I love donuts and pastries and stuff like that, I don't eat it all the time because mm-hmm. because in my in my opinion, in my opinion, like you know, if like I'm just gonna be really bad about something, I'm just gonna go straight for the just straight for the candy section. Yeah. Uh, cause uh, cause my my mom's a diabetic. She's been a diabetic my entire life, and mm-hmm. she's always been like, and she's always like been on me about like eating candy and stuff. So like it was a time when like you know like eating candy was a reward. So I became an adult, and you know it's a reward twenty four seven now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm su- right. I'm actually shocked. I am not a diabetic. It's it's I I am shocked because like I I I throw down like uh, okay so for like like this bag right here. I just opened this bag this morning. It will be done by tonight. By the time I end stream, I guarantee you it will be done. If there's a little bit left, I will be shocked by the time I go to bed tonight. Well, but, you, uh, you work out so much, you burn a lot of calories. You know what? And I think and I think that's the equalizer right there. Not mm-hmm. saying I should just go ham on it, you know, but at the same time, I feel like it might be the equalizer. Like I'm burning off this energy that, you know, like my body just happens to have stored up and stuff like that. But no, nah, I mean seriously, before I got before I got to this level, I'm shocked I wasn't a diabetic then. I may have been pre diabetic and, and not even known about it because when I tell you when I tell you I eat I, I eat sweets like nobody business i i do and even my mom she's like uh, i'm gonna have a heart attack if you don't chill out with that stuff <laughs> <laughs> well uh mama dawkins uh we love you <laughs> ah, give me uh my next one is the kit kat mini dark uh the kit kat mint dark chocolate wait 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 wait, wait. kit kat has a mint dark oh it's brand new isn't it that's brand new isn't it if you have not tried it, go 
get your life. I'm going to yes. have to go so, to the store. Because it's, it's the green and black one. It's dark mm-hmm. chocolate with yeah. mint. Yes. Um, the Andes, it has that Andes kind of taste to it. With that with, with that cookie wafer in the middle. Yes. Okay. Oh, I okay. love Andes. Smith, yes. So I'm gonna have to try the. Oh, I love. Oh, I love going to Italian restaurants and they give you those Andes. Yes. Ch- Andes yes. mint chocolates. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm like, thank you, Olive Garden. You yes. are family. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Olive Garden just got their plug for the day. <laughs> Them months, when they drop to 89 cents, 79 cents at my 69 cents at my job, I'll get about three or four packs of them and we'll run through them. The the the, they even have them in the king size, so there's like eight, eight, like eight or ten Kit Kat bars. See, uh, see, I was already excited when you said Kit Kat because I was like, oh, Kit Kat bars, and you know, like oh, you got Kit Kat I'm, bars, you oh. got the Kit Kat white chocolate bars, and then yeah. every now and then the orange cream bars. Like you know, on the, on a good day, they hit you. They hit I this right too. I need to find mm-hmm. those. I can't find them. I want them so if bad. I, if I spot some, I'll let you know where to find them at. And if you tell me you can't find them, I may have to send you some. <laughs> okay, I'm maybe you- maybe maybe in the winter time though, because like right now in all this heat, like you <laughs> snack exchange, snack exchange. Well, we may because we sometimes get the special Kit Kat in Halloween's because we got the lemon flavored Kit Kat uh, last year. How's that? Um, I've never, I haven't even heard of that. How's that? That must, uh, be, that must be Chicago. It, that must be a Chicago thing. <laughs> it was a. Uh, it was um, no the lemon the lemon one that they did was for Easter. Oh, that it makes was, sense with that pastel bag. color. Yeah, that pastel yeah. color. And mm-hmm. so it had like a lemon slash white chocolate taste to it. It was, rich, was, was really good. And then in October, I think they do the like a orange, the orange. The, like orange, sharp, the orange cream one, yeah. Orange cream one, yeah. So we may get that, but I want to see if I could, because Japan already got the strawberry banana and I'm upset. That's where to go for Kit Kat flavors. Yeah. We all just have to go to Japan. <laughs> yeah, as a, matter of, as a matter of fact, Japan loves Japan loves Kit Kat the same way they love Hello Kitty. <laughs> I love Hello Kitty too. I have to say. <laughs> I the last they had a Hello Kitty Kit Kat bar. I don't want to eat Hello Kitty. They... <laughs> <laughs> that would feel it a, horrible. It was, a, it was a strawberry flavored one, right? If okay. Well, if, it's, if it's strawberry, I'll uh, I'll eat it. <laughs> but wait, don't they have like a couple of Hello Kitty outlets? I want to say ones in Washington State, ones in New York. Probably. Uh, I think so, Sanrio yes. stores. Yes. Probably. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What's, All right, your, so, what's your so, third one? Uh, third. Uh, this is, you could kidnap me with this candy. Kidnap you with it. It's, oh, oh, <laughs> cherry, oh, you oh you were getting to a shady van, huh? Uh, <laughs> it is the cherry pull and peel twisters. Oh yeah, the ones that come apart like string cheese. They're like really they're like really stringy. Yeah. Yes. I feel like those are a bit much for twizzlers. I like I like traditional twizzlers. I I I buy I don't pull them I straight up bite bite into them like they're twizzlers. It's a cool it's a cool texture. It's unique. Yeah, it's like spaghetti a little bit. Oh, like, oh, uh, all these I used to run in all these and buy like five bags and stick the mugs into the movie theater, the regular twizzlers, and I would still run oh. into them. And stick that's them how. In. That's honestly how you know I'm going to the movie theaters, yeah, or I've gone to one. If you see me with a bag of twizzlers at home, like you like yeah. hey, did you go to the movies, like yep, that's my movie snack. Yeah, because yep. in all honesty, that's the one snack you that's the one snack you usually have some left by the time the movie's over. Because yeah, not me. Even, <laughs> oh, I'll just say, even even as greedy as I even as I'm as greedy as I am, I don't kill a whole bag of Twizzlers through uh, you know before before halfway through the movie. I don't. Well, I guess we're talking about what size bag are we talking? I'm talking okay. about the family size. Yeah, yeah, oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the movie theaters out here, they sell, they don't sell like the family size one, but they sell the one that might as well be the family size one. You know, uh-huh. if they're gonna if they're gonna get you to spend six dollars for a bag of Twizzlers, they're gonna, you know, they oh. gotta give you. I'm going to be at Walgreens or Walgreens or Target, and I'm gonna get that good old family size because they now got it for two for four. You better get your life. I'm it's gonna funny, get two. <laughs> it's funny that you say that because the only time I really quit create Twizzlers is when I'm going to the movie theater. Like it's uh, like I love Twizzlers too. Like it's one of my because uh. Twizzlers so tell this lie that it's good for your teeth. Oh. That's that's kind of a lie because like yeah like it does encourage you to chew and it does get the saliva going in your mouth but that's about where it ends right there. Yeah, don't don't look at the sugar content. Kids. Exactly. <laughs> don't look at the sugar content. And keep the keep the licorice flavor away from me. I don't want black licorice. Keep that away from me. That yeah, no, no. no. I, I like black I like black licorice jelly beans. 
I do too, actually. But they gotta be like the Jelly Belly ones, not the yeah. not the regular size ones the that you know, Brocks like rocks or whatever. Yeah, like, not the one, yeah. not not the ones that you can't have like that you can't let toddlers have, you know, eat because they'll choke. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Be like, I could plant this in the ground and, and build a beanstalk. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> so we're gonna t- get into our three meals. And Celeste, I'm going to start with you this time. Uh, no, I did start with you last time. I'm sorry. I did. I don't. I don't no. remember. We got really no, carried away. I'm right. oh, sorry. So <laughs> yeah, all uh, our all, all of our fat kids have started to come out. So you know, it's just fair game now. Yes. Uh, okay. I, I, um. I need, I need, yeah. My, so let's so your uh three meals. I love sushi. Raw fish sushi is my favorite. Um, yes. I like the spicier Same. the better. I don't like cucumbers. I know I, I like pickles, but I do not eat cucumbers. So if there's cucumber in my sushi roll, I will take my chopstick and. Poke it out. <laughs> <Poke> it out. <laughs> I, and, you know what? I've, oh, it's the little the little strip ones. Yes, it makes my life that much more difficult whenever okay. they're shredded like that. <laughs> okay, tonkatsu ramen, the pork ramen. Oh. In the bowl, like a soup Ooh. with the egg and the bamboo I've shoot. never had it. Oh, oh, Ed, Ed, I... Mm. So it is so good. I see. <laughs> trust me. I've seen pictures. Of, I've seen pictures of it. It's on my list to get. I gotta find a place around here that sells it. The if pork like, ramen. If you like, if you like katsudon, you're gonna love. You're gonna love it. Oh, it is comfort food. It is delicious. I, I've never made it on my own because it looks like it takes way too much work. <laughs> I know. How do the restaurants do it? So and, and make it look all like oh, well, we just threw it together. <laughs> You know, we just did this in an hour. We probably it's, had it marinating. It's, it's literally on my list oh, uh, to and, get. Um, and, and we have we have an Asian mall like an hour away from me because I usually go to a certain place to go get sushi there. Um, and I got to see if they're open back up. And their mall, they have a Japanese grocery store. Mm-hmm. And they have a food court and everything. Um, so if they have one of those at the food court, I'm going to get it there. I'm going to try So good. I hope you like it. And my third one might be more local than anything. Homemade crawfish stew with boiled eggs. Oh, it. snap. I, I, oh, snap. I, 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 I live, okay, I'm, I, everybody knows it by this point, but I live in southern Louisiana, and my grandma's homemade crawfish stew mm. with boiled eggs. Mm, mm, Some mm. Tony Satchery seasoning on it. Oh. Once again, Laron, I told her I'm that when I if I ever come to Louisiana to meet Celeste, I'm kidnapping her grandma. <laughs> grandma Roberts I'm coming back to North Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> but those are those are my three. I mean, it was really hard. Ed, I, I was kind of mad. I was like, only three, only three. But well, well, I broke it down. <laughs> uh, what's your late night honorable mention snack? <laughs> my snack? No. Um. Uh, Late night, late night honorable mention the meal, I should say. Give you your extra one. Let, let, you let, let's right get here. back to me. We'll go to Laurent. I have to think about this. Laurent, what are your three favorite meals? <laughs> all right. All right. Well, uh, my three favorite meals, I'm going to, I'm going to start with one right now that, that, you know, honestly, like I probably go, I go out of my way for, which I, and I have to watch myself around it. Any type of like gourmet nachos and when i say gourmet oh. i'm talking about i'm talking about like shredded chicken shredded uh you know uh, strips of a uh, steak it does not matter if it is a gourmet nacho uh chances are you know the combination of the meat the cheese and the tortilla chips and all that stuff i get in my mouth just, yes. just yeah. Uh, gourmet yeah. nacho yeah yeah, like I, 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 I'm a nacho fanatic, and uh, and and I'm one of those, and I'm one of those, I'm one of those fat asses that I will, I will try my damnedest to eat the nachos before the before all the chips get soggy. That's how yeah. did you, that's how did you get the did you get the two for ten at uh the nacho ground uh, grande at they was doing that Taco Bell. They was doing the two for ten, and it was the big plate of nachos with all of that taco. Oh, stuff is that? Oh, is that? Oh, is that all? Is that all the Taco Bells getting ready to uh, to liquidate that menu item because uh, they're not going to be carrying probably, those soon. Probably. Now, actually, as much as I like ta- as, as much as I like nachos and much as I like Taco Bell, like that's usually not what I get from Taco Bell. Uh, like I do like their nachos though, but uh, but I don't normally normally uh, I'm kind of boring with food sometimes because when I go to a place like Taco Bell, I'm usually just getting the tacos. <laughs> Ah, okay. Yeah. Then where do where do you, where do you get your big not, uh, gourmet nachos? Like where do you like to go get them? 
Or well, did most, you make them yourself? There's oh, well, I, I I do I do make them from time to time. Uh, but um, but normally I'll just go to like we've got we've got a, a Jose Tequila's restaurant out here that's not too far from where I live at. Uh, mm. they they actually they actually throw out some good nachos. Um, mm. uh, another place, Cafe Rio. Uh, I love their nachos there. Um, uh, and those are main too. If uh, if if I'm not going to either one of those places, I'll just go I'll just go grab the ingredients and make them myself. Uh. Mm. Uh, let's see. Meal number meal number two uh, is uh, is actually. I hate to admit this, and I hate to admit this. Uh, it's actually it's actually a good deluxe pizza. Nothing wrong with Ooh. that. That's delicious. It's actually a good deluxe pizza, and and I can go either way when when it comes to deluxe pizzas. It can be the deluxe pizzas with like the pepperoni sausage and all that stuff on it, or I can go the other route where it's like the like it's the 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 chicken pizzas where you know with like with like bacon barbecue sauce and all that stuff. Yeah, and and yes, I am one of those people that believe pineapple does belong on pizza. Yes, me too. me too. I do. That's one of the only ways I will eat pineapple is on a pizza. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> we, me, me and Celeste were in agreement. Corey was just like, huh? I think he was about to burn us at the stake. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here's the thing about it, and and and, and I'm, I'm I'm talking to all you people who do not believe that pineapple belongs on pizza. You probably haven't had in the right in the right setting or environment because here's what here's where pineapple actually actually complements a pizza. In situations where there is bacon and chicken on it, mm-hmm. in situations where there's ham on it, mm-hmm. and in, and in situations and this is the crazy part, in situations where it's supposed to be a vegetarian style pizza. Uh, but where you where you where you have to go differently with a vegetarian style pizza because there's no meat and there's pineapple on it. It cannot have a white sauce as the base. It cannot. Mm-hmm. Uh, you will screw that pizza up if you throw pineapples on that because like you're throwing all this bitter and it's one hint of sweet and that's where it messes you up. So, mm-hmm. all you people, all you people who hate pineapple on pizza, who hurt you? Who hurt you? <laughs> like, like 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 who did you wrong? Like like did someone did someone slam your slam your hand oh. your hand in the door when you were a kid? What what happened? <laughs> Laurent. Mm-hmm. As long as we're not paying for their pizza, they can hate all they want. If I'm paying for your pizza, <laughs> you gonna get some pineapple. <laughs> if you broke and you hungry and you trying to eat off of me, you gonna get some pineapple. Beggars can't be choosers. All right, and my number, and my number three food, my number three food, and this just this just shows how American I am. It's all it's all about a good wing. Uh, it can be, oh. it can be, it can be, it can be your garden variety like like buffalo wings or whatever. It doesn't, it do, it doesn't matter. But I tell you what, what I what, what I really love though is Vietnamese style fried wings. I Ooh. especially especially when it, especially when it's got a good base of like of like of of garlic, uh, fish sauce and uh and some type of and some type of uh Thai basil. It does not matter at that point. Like, it, and it's and it's and it's got that nice crisp to it. There's a, there's an art to it, and I can actually make them myself too. But uh, but I prefer to just go out to a restaurant and get them. <laughs> Look at Laurent <laughs> being the chef, <laughs> chef boy all Laurent. Yep. <laughs> uh, uh, send me the pictures of the uh, Vietnamese chicken wings. I need to see that. Okay, Honey, okay. As a matter of fact, my my roommates my roommates are already begging me to make some. So the next time I make them, I'll go. Ahead, I'll definitely I'll definitely make it a make it an Instagram your food type of night. Very yes. nice. Very SNS, nice. Do the barbecue pork uh ramen for me too. I, I need to see. So uh my is <laughs> uh of course uh I'm I'm a little bit basic, but lo mein. Uh mm. I love lo mein with some good old pork, um yeah. with fried rice to it. They serve it by my house uh at uh this Chinese place, uh and I think they're open, but um I stop. I eat, I ordered it so much that I stop in, and they're like, "Oh, lo man, here's here's your price, six seventy five. Like they literally know that what I want. They will not question. I love. I just love it. Uh, my second one is teriyaki chicken. I yes, I. Good stuff. Good stuff. Last but not least, barbecue boneless chicken. And the reason why I picked that is because when KFC had it. KLC honey barbecue boneless chicken. Was nobody was touching. Nobody. Because right. Because like cheeseburgers, gyro, shrimp, and sushi and all of that. So everybody knows that I draw all of that. Uh, but like some good boneless chicken, I would eat you out the house. Very nice. Gosh, so. I'm gonna have to eat after this. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we're going to get to our dessert list, and I'm going to start this one uh, because 
pecan pie is <gasps> my favorite. I love mm. good pecan pie. Good. With some vanilla ice cream scooped on it when it's yes. warm. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and of course I'm hood because I'm black as and ghetto as all ever at times. Some good old sweet potato pie. Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. Sweet potato I, I, pie. Oh. I respect everyone who does pumpkin pie, but some good sweet potato pie, especially when the crust come off and it comes from a, a Christian black mama. Yes. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, so yeah. Ba- so basically, so basically, you learn where you learn when the like the revival church season is happening. <laughs> you hit up all the aunts and grandmas. <laughs> Y'all need five dollars for the bacon uh, uh bacon donation? I'm there. Yes, hit, yes, I will go to a church bake sale, please, please. Yes, shoot, I have I uh, went to my friend's church in uh Kentucky and I was gonna mar- come out there with somebody being married to me because all the women there, white, black, Mexican, Chinese, they mm-hmm. all cook they they made me feel so good that I didn't touch anything in when I got back home for a good two and a half weeks. I mean I ate stuff, but nothing nobody's chicken tasted like theirs, their hamburgers didn't taste not, like I didn't even go to McDonald's for two and a half weeks. And wow. LeBron knows LeBron knows that I was just like while he was streaming, I ran to checkers and got me some fries, a banana milkshake and the cheese in the I was, and a burger. I I was so jealous of you. <laughs> you just don't know. You just don't know when this when this when this shred thing is over in, in, in August, like I am I am so having a day of just bad food. You deserve Do you it. have checkers? You burned it. Yeah. Uh, we have rallies. Mm-hmm. Rallies, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's season five fries. LeBron, you'll be mad because I had checkers yesterday night. Uh, but my... <laughs> Your third. Your third dessert. My third, my third one is German chocolate cake. <gasps> you, you, sir. <laughs> yes. Very nice. That's good stuff. Uh, yeah. What is the what is it about the German chocolate cake? I I gotta know because I I have I have my th- I have my thing on why I love German chocolate cake. What is your thing about German chocolate cake? It is the mixture of that frosting going with that chocolate with that oh, bread. Uh, it's uh-huh. it literally um is it it's Antimas or it's Mas? It's the white blue box with the uh name like it looked like it, yeah it, yeah Entmans it, it yeah. Mhm. Oh yeah yeah at the grocery store. Yeah. Yes, yes. They make German. pies and cakes. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, 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 would, I would fight. But if you see, can now, make... See, now that you said German chocolate cake, I got to remove one of my three off the list because we, we both can't have the same thing. Yes, we can. Sure. <laughs> yes, that, makes, that, means you're, that means you're cool. That means you're extra cool. Okay, well, that well, well okay, so that means I have to add a bonus thing now. Yes. Yes, yes you have a bonus thing. So you go next, Laron. All right, so my three favorite, my three favorite desserts... Peanut butter cookies. <sighs> Peanut butter, and and question. And if you, question. Soft yeah. or they gotta be fully cooked, like like rock hard. No, no, they, they got they gotta be soft. They got. Uh, okay, I, I actually I meet in the middle. They're semi chewy. We're all good. But, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, but, okay. Uh, but I can't stand. I can't. As much as I like cookies, and I do like hard cookies, like ginger snaps and stuff like that, when it comes to a peanut butter cookie, I cannot have it all like super crunchy and, and heavily mm-hmm. resistant and stuff like that. Yes. Um. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, but uh, but if you want an extra bonus, like get me the peanut butter cookies with the peanut butter chips in them, the peanut butter mussels. Oh man, I I, I melt I, melt in your mouth. Exactly. Did you yeah. do the? Oh, you probably didn't do the chip ahoy soft cookies where they had the Reese's peanut butter in them. I did. I didn't like those. I, I uh, chips ahoy cookies. I love chips ahoy cookies, but they're soft cookies. This is this. I'm I'm exposing a really weird weird thing about like about the way I experience food sometimes. Like sometimes you can tell when they use just too much of one like ingredient or mm-hmm. one chemical in something, yeah. and and it, and it usually detracts from it enough. Like you know, just like that's like how like when I'm at when I'm at your cookout and stuff like that, and and you know like you hand me a soda, I take one sip, I can immediately tell if it's a diet soda. <laughs> it's like it's like it's me like too. there's this it's like there's this flavor that just like, as soon as my as my tongue gets it, it it, it just, like ding. Like no, you know, stuff like that, and certain foods that certain foods that why you know, like I just prefer like if if I really want, if you really want a good uh, peanut butter cookie, like and you got a store by them, get the Loft House cookies. Uh, you may you may or might not know what I'm talking about. They're the ones that come in that plastic container. Oh, you know how you know those those soft white cookies without icing on it. 
Yes. Same yeah, company. Yeah, same yeah. company makes those Loft House, and they make they make their own like basically like other cookies, like peanut butter cookies, chocolate chocolate chip cookies, all that stuff. Is it that, like uh, is it like a medium sized cookie that's like wrapped up in plastic? A medium sized cookie wrapped. You mean are, are they individually wrapped? Yeah. Sometimes um, they're like wrapped no, those, up in. At Walmart a lot in the yeah, bakery section. Yeah. Okay. Those are those are Wal- that's the Walmart brand ones. There's an actual brand called Loft oh, House. If I'm okay. not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken, Loft House, Loft House brand is uh, you find you find them a lot at uh, Food Lions. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. I will I will look it up, and if I can't find them in my area, I will and see just, if I order some. Then just get a recipe. Hey, nobody can do peanut butter cookies better than you can. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Uh, as, I remember that was the first thing I I, I remember that was the first thing I ever actually remember cooking when I was a kid. Uh, like uh, like because uh, we're military families and uh, mm-hmm. and on a military basis sometimes you get the industrial cans of the peanut butter. Uh, so uh, sometimes and I love peanut butter. So you know there are times it's like okay, well I can I just can't be having this regular peanut butter sometimes. So I found a recipe for peanut butter cookies. My mom comes home from work and she's like, "Did you cook something?" I was like, "Yeah, I cooked some peanut butter cookies." She, and first she got mad at me for cooking while nobody was at at home. <laughs> <laughs> and then when she had one, she was like, "Oh, you're gonna cook these all the time." <laughs> nice. Oh. It's just, just to get everybody heads up, Corey, do not lose your cool. These are our personal snacks and desserts. He we know you like don't like. Butter. Doesn't like peanut. Butter. <laughs> Except on well, he, don't, he don't like. He doesn't like peanut butter. He doesn't like pineapple on on pizza. Uh, like, is he any fun? Don't go- get me wrong. Look, Corey could throw down. I, I have like, had some. I have had some of his cooking and. Uh, I was I, I was just, I was about to ask the question. Is he, is he is he fun? Is he fun to go out to restaurants? I was just about oh, to ask yes. the question. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. He is. He he knows his food up and down. He just have a particular taste for him for himself. Oh, but he could, he could throw <laughs> Corey could throw down. The I just have came and happened to me multiple times. Okay, okay, okay. Gotcha. All right. So uh, dessert number two. Dessert number two uh, is um. I'm an ice cream person. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't I don't always go out of my way for it, but uh, but any type of coconut ice cream and usually Hagen Dazs has the best ones. Any type of coconut ice cream is usually going to be where you can find me at. Or also any me and my roommate we have a thing going on right now because uh because he's trying to gain weight and I'm trying to lose weight. And we said the first person to hit 230 pounds is getting is getting Cold Stone a triple scoop. A triple scoop, it doesn't matter in a waffle cone. So yeah, waffle cone ice cream definitely. Mm-hmm. So like you go out and you buy those tubs of, of ice cream that had the waffle the waffle cone chips in them. I do oh. I, I do that in with the Haagen Dazs. Yeah, actually because yeah because yeah. uh, yeah, um I because we have a buy one get one free at uh at my job at Barbary. Uh, so um I'm going to be taking uh part of that sale tonight, and I normally get that one, uh, with it. I, they normally, I think they have a waffle one with peanut butter also in it for okay, ice cream. That sounds like that sounds like Duff by ice cream. I may have to get on that. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Well, what's right. your third? The third one. The third one is is a is is the uh, is the the marble chocolate cheesecakes. And when I say the marble ones, I'm talking about the, it's the chocolate cheesecake with the white cheese with the white cheesecake uh, added, you, you know, addition to it. So it looks like it basically looks like a brown and white swirl. Basically, yeah, that's good. Uh, and and you get bonus points if you can put a really good topping on it. Like typically, the one of the best toppings to have on those type of cheesecakes is a graham cracker, a graham cracker crumb topping. Mm. Yes, I love um, cheese, I love cheesecakes, and and I I will I will judge somebody on a cheesecake. <laughs> oh man, I, I will run through a Sara Lee strawberry cheesecake. I will run through that. The marble ones, I have to take my time with it. Um. And that's and it's it's mostly because it's just like I like to let it melt and take mm-hmm. its time mm-hmm. and then go for another scoop and just like mm, like oh, I yeah. have to take my time with it. Good so. stuff. And then of course and then of course the bonus one is German chocolate cake. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so we are close to the end of the show, but we have one guilty one that we just can't like no I gotta have it no matter what. I'm going to go first on this one because apple pie, I don't care where it comes from. I don't care who makes it. If you make a delicious apple, if I could get an apple pie, I'm there. I'm I'm buying it. I'm eating it. I I 
I will marry you if you make it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I I love apple pie. That is literally my guilty one. Uh, Celeste, what's your guilty one? Boiled seafood. Mmm. During crawfish season or boiled shrimp, boiled blue crabs. I love it. I love boiled seafood. Ah, uh, Lerat. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> well, 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 prepare to be thrown. Uh, any type of vegetable tempura, especially, especially tempura sweet potato. That's never crazy. had it. Oh my god! Anytime I go, anytime I go to an, anytime I go to a to an Asian restaurant mm-hmm. and tempura's on their menu, I'll get the entree plus a side of of, of tempura. <laughs> it does not. It it doesn't matter. I uh, may have if stuff. my. I think if, if my China if my uh, Chinese place sells it uh, some tempura, I think I'm gonna buy some because I've well, never t- had it. Oh, well, typically most of your most of your regular like Chinese places that you know like you get the, like the combos and stuff like that usually will not mm-hmm. have a tempura. You have to actually go like a go to like a restaurant adjacent one. And, uh, ah. and 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 depending and depending on some of your sushi places, sometimes like if you go to we have the, we have this chain over here called Sushi King where basically it's a sushi restaurant and you just order right off the menu and they bring it to you and it's, and it's all you can eat type of type of deal. Yes. And, and some of our sushi kings out here actually have tempura as a as a, as a side as a side or an appetizer. Delicious. And so, yeah, it is. Delicious. With that, yes. like it's like a dipping sauce sometimes. Oh yeah, like yeah, the tempura sauce. sauce. Yep. Yes. Yeah. I don't even I don't even need the sauce. That's that. Uh, the, the the crazy thing about me and, and and my personal trainer loves it. He's like, you're one of my you're one of my few clients that actually has no hangups about eating vegetables. Like I I can eat practically. 98% of, the, of whatever is considered vegetables, I can usually eat it. There, and and I'm getting to the point now where some of the stuff that I did not eat as kid, as a kid, I love it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, man. When it comes to vegetables, like I love when it's steamed. Um, mm-hmm. I love like because uh, my mom, she uh, when she does broccoli, she like uh, cooks it with this like lemon sauce to it. Um, and it's really good. Do, do, I will max zucchini and mushrooms if you steam them together. If you put them together, I will max them. Without, and I could just have that by itself. I will max some zucchini and mushrooms if they're steamed. That, and, uh, cucumbers, I, I would eat like it's chips. Um, but I don't normally get them as much of food. In the, or anything. If it comes with it, I'll be like, no, 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 Carrots, I always dip it in cheese sauce. <laughs> Honestly, carrots carrots are probably my least favorite vegetable, but that's not saying I don't eat them. Like carrots are, mm-hmm. I, I feel like I, I think I think at this point in my life, I've had so many carrots. Like that's one of the most bland vegetables out there, and and it's funny because carrots have like a lot of flavor for for being considered a vegetable. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and as, asparagus, I just that. Uh, when I go to the bathroom, I'll be like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so good with some Parmesan cheese sprinkled on top. See, I gotta do that. I no, I've never thought about putting uh, uh, Parmesan cheese on asparagus. Um, I'm gonna do that. You give you two have given me ideas of stuff that I need to try. Like, <laughs> We're gonna make you eat all it's the vegetables, all the vegetables. Oh, I will eat them, I will become Kirby and suck them all up. <laughs> so. Uh, but everybody, that is going to do it for Boss Rush Podcast. Thank you guys for ch- tuning in, checking us out. Uh, Celeste, where can we find you? You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at FairyCrypt and also at AnotherZeldaPodcast.com. Yes. Leron, where can we find you? You can find me. You can also find me on uh, Twitter and uh, on, on Instagram at EXODUS803, Exodus803, that's my gamer tag. So, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome to come find me. I typically engage with anybody on social media. You know, just don't don't be too much of a creep, and you know, we're all good to go. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, um, eventually I'll start plugging my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> you keep saying that. <laughs> Well, I, I don't know. I feel like I feel like my YouTube channel is going strong for a little bit, and I started neglecting it. Well, well, okay. So Celeste, Eddie, Eddie can tell you. Uh, recently, like I was, uh, i I've, I've been doing a Mass Effect thing. Um, um, on the PC, I've been replaying Mass Effect, and uh, and I've modded it so like it's it's complete remastered for our time. So 4K everything. I've even found mm-hmm. ways to like plug in stuff that was left on the cutting room floor, like so old the dialogue that they never put in the game. People found a way to people found a way to actually get that back into the game. 
So, uh, so I've been doing a playthrough of that, and um, and I've been pretty strong on it for a while. Like, as a matter of fact, I'm um, I'm in limbo right now because I'm supposed to be add, uh, adding my fourth installment to it. I just got through doing the edits and everything to it, and I was listening to my replay, and apparently my microphone was open. So, no. even though even though I was being quiet as I played the game, my phone was next to my microphone. So every now and then you can hear my phone notifications going off in the gameplay. And and I thought at first I was like, oh, that's a coincidence, you know, that's a sound effect in the game that sounded like my phone. And then I heard it again. I was like, God, no. So now I was like, do I re do I recut it? Uh, do I replay that whole segment of the game and 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 re up and upload that, or do I just upload it? And it's it's been one of those things like uh like I, my, I told him to up, I told him to upload it. You know, it'd be oh, funny yeah. that you're just walking and then it's the silent moment, and then like a DDR ringtone came on. It, it, it's, it's, it's just it's I would so it like it's, that. I it's, would so, it's so it's it's so embarrassing though. It's like <laughs> you're human. Like, People have fun. Right. Oh uh, yeah, I, I stay uploaded, dude. Because yeah, I, 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 I agree. It would be a nice it's, little. It's community. already yeah, it's already rendered and everything. All I gotta do is just upload to the channel and and like go and it's out there and it's like. But I like I said, listen to that playback and I'm kind of glad I listened to the playback first because can I, can you imagine like you know you sitting there thinking something's perfect and then you upload to the channel and all of a sudden you start getting these comments and saying, hey dude, we can hear this and this and that in the background. I was like, oh no. What'd I do? <laughs> oh, so this way it'll be let, a little bonus. I would let Leron know firsthand. I'm like, cause I'm, I'll be like, you posted, I'm watching it. I want to, I want to hear everything. You'd be like, okay, this, this, and this happened. Um, but you're all good and stuff. I mean, I mean, can you come on? Can you take someone's stream seriously when they got their freaking phone going off in the background? I can't. Like, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just happy I wasn't doing something else in the background that could have gotten picked up. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> hey, don't go there. <laughs> I would talk to you about that in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the world was you doing trying to play? I'm like, who was playing the game? D? He <laughs> ate too many beans. That's all it was. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's all it was. Where can we find you, Eddie? You guys can find me on Twitter at that pressure code. You can check out Optional Opinion on SoundCloud, other podcast apps. I will be getting back to my podcast and recording episodes and getting some out because I, uh, the one that I want to do is uh, can Sony and Nintendo ever work together again? And I really want to ex- uh, take a look at that and express um, my thoughts about that. And then I have some other ones because, like, I'm doing, uh, I'm doing one on the Last Guardian. Um, I'm doing, and there's a, there's, there, I have a whole list of stuff that I'm doing for optional opinion. So it's going to be a really, really good one. Um, you guys can find me on, uh, PlayStation as Old Comic Code. You can find me on Xbox One as the Lyrical One. Uh, check them out, Twitter page at, at that virtual code for my Switch code if you guys need it. Um, uh, the beauty of video games is coming in September. Uh, three weeks of talking about, of we're actually celebrating the great things of video games and right now i might as well just get it out the way uh the theme is going to be is technotastic technotastic where we're going to be talking about technic uh the technical aspects of uh video games is celebrating so we're talking about lighting cutscenes, uh special effects um uh we were talking earlier uh about ninja guided so you guys will have to read the blog to understand why I have written that uh, piece about Ninja Gaiden. It's a really good one. It's still in the early ages mm-hmm. stages, like but you have to read it. Uh, and mm-hmm. we might even talk about Night Trap. Wow. Taking it back. I'm taking it back. Uh, so uh, that is coming in September. We're gonna have I'm gonna have special guests doing the podcast, and somebody's gonna give an epilogue this year. I just have to find who. So epilogue. like I said. Okay. Yeah, so it's in the planning stages. Leron, I might be coming to you, so get your tech your tech stuff together, cause uh, oh, okay, um, you know how things run on the PC, and I know squats. 
I know how to get, <laughs> you know, get online and write and do whatever I need to do. But everybody, that is going to be for the Boss Rush Podcast this uh, episode. Thank you, Celeste. Thank you, Laron, uh, for joining me. If you guys have any ideas, uh, we want to know what your next is. Follow us on Boss Rush Podcast on Twitter and email us at Boss Rush Podcast, uh, Boss Rush Gays Pro at gmail.com. I want to know what your snack list looks like. Uh, what's your guilty pleasure? Uh, what you are are you gaming on PC? Are you gaming on Switch or consoles? What do you think of the conversations that we have? We want to know all about that. With that, everybody, we will see you next time on Watch Podcast. Bye, everybody. Bye. Take care, everyone. I mean, Link brings it. I have to say, like, <laughs> you know what? You know what? You know what? Oh, we're not. The, we're not. Hold on, the round. And it, I was watching it too. And I, at that same point, and when you mentioned Soul Calibur three, I forgot to mention that everybody was pissed off at Soul Calibur three because it didn't come <laughs> because it didn't come to GameCube. Um, it only came to PlayStation. Xbox didn't get it neither. And that's why I, I mentioned I was just like Soul Calibur 2 so well on GameCube because of Link. And so when 3 came out, it was like literally a slap in the face. I'm like, how did y'all make money off of three platforms? And then y'all went to one and then everybody then like three. Well, apparently, doing a little bit of history. Well, also you gotta remember Namco. Namco had a really deep partnership with Sony back then in, the, in those times. But also at the same time. Namco did the research, and apparently the Xbox version didn't sell strong, and the GameCube yes. and the GameCube wasn't going to be able to handle the heavy lifting that they plan to do for the new series. And also, because Soul Calibur Three was an overhaul of the um, of the Soul Calibur engine, okay. they, they introduced some new mechanics and stuff like that. And uh, and GameCube, well, GameCube and Nintendo's consoles at the time were not going to be able to be able to handle that heavy lifting. Maybe if the Wii was out at that time, you know, maybe. There would have been something like that, but uh, but also the Wii is also more like a glorified GameCube, in my opinion. But uh, but uh, but yeah, uh, I wasn't shading. The no, whole, I, was, I just it was your reaction. It was. <laughs> I, I knew, yeah, I knew you wouldn't mean anything malevolent. I just thought it was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> And you, you see my reaction. I didn't take it as no shade. It was just no, like, oh, no, I didn't so take anything. Kind of three, and I was I just listen. like, uh. I will say this: the inclusion of the inclusion of Soul Calibur and Link on the GameCube actually got a whole new audience into Soul Calibur. Yeah, uh, including uh, me. That's how yeah, I heard of it. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, me, I've been playing. I was playing the Soul Calibur series back when it was called Soul Edge back in the day. Yes. And, yeah. Um, and okay. even though I, even though I love the series, I'm not strong on it because I've always had a problem with games that you had to press a button to block. It's just one of those things, like you know, just just because uh, I grew up on Street Fighter. So games like Street mm-hmm. Fighter and Tekken and stuff like that, where you know naturally, if someone's attacking you, you're gonna back away from them. So back is how you <laughs> is how you defend yourself. <laughs> so you ha- yeah, because if you play, because see, I I learned the block button do Mortal Kombat. Mm-hmm. And yes, so the, the raising your arms and yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yes. It's yeah, so, like that would like that would really protect you from some of those powers in real life. You just get your arms blown off or broken. Yes. <laughs> exactly. And it's it's weird because I had to train myself to be like Street Fighter is the fighting game, the series. That's a basic fighter that you hold back. So that's Capcom. You always know that you're not going to get a block button. Mm-hmm. Uh Anything else, uh, Virtual Fighter, Tekken, Soul Calibur, Dead or Alive, all of them have block buttons that you have to hit. And right. it was just like, I'm not used to this at all. <laughs> and it's like, uh, oh. oh, and also, Laurent, uh, yes, you see my uh, love for your thirst. So I'm going to leave that right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, salute to you, man, with the 22 uh, push up thing. When I read yeah. that, I was just like, that is, um, I, I don't know if it's a common thing. Like, uh, oh, it's common. It's I, getting, I've so, seen it before here and there. Yeah, like for the last year, maybe it was probably older than that, huh? It's been, it's been going. It, well, it's the awareness uh, part of it has been around for a while. I want to say it's been. Yes. I want to say the awareness has been around for five or six years, uh, especially uh, with our with our soldiers coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. It's gotten mm-hmm. very prevalent, and I even have a I even have a friend who who 
he's all he he's a he's a veteran as well. And um and he's had some issues and is and has helped has helped bring me into it because I'm also a veteran but I I haven't seen combat the way these guys have, so and and my sister just recently uh, got out of the army herself um and she was over in Afghanistan for for uh, I want to say two rotations I think I know for sure she did one rotation but I think she did two. Well, thank and, you both for your service, all of you. Oh, all right. You, you know what? It's it's crazy. Every time someone thanks me for my service, it's always like I I'm. I get caught, you know, because I don't I never think of it. I I grew up in a military family mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and as a natural path, I wound up joining the military myself. So it's it always strikes me when someone says thank you for your service and and don't think that I'm deflecting or anything. It's it's mm-hmm. a really humbling experience. I've just never like wrapped my head around it. It's <laughs> and probably that, like, oh, it's my job. <laughs> right. And, and and that's why I posted like salute to salute to you, salute to everybody, all the troops and stuff, because it's just like you, everybody who's out there uh, sacrificing their lives or giving their t- like doing the stuff so that we can have these freedoms and 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 everything. It's just like we got to take honor in that, and we got to honor people and stuff. And uh, the the veteran suicide I know of, but like, and this is a hard thing for me because just I don't hear much about it, and I'm just like I wish that people kind of would talk about it so that so that kind of awareness could be mm-hmm. given because we we talk about mental health suicide mm-hmm, around mm-hmm. people who don't serve and stuff but i'm like you got to look at people in the army like ptsd and stuff like that yes yeah why oh, God, you know yes. and and we um because it's it's kind of it's kind of weird that you know some army vets and stuff may play gears of war or stay away from gears of war uh, and stuff like that, like or their kids can't play army games because of the because PTSD. of because of how because of how the, yeah like um yeah. like I I, I fin- it finally clicked for me because like I said I got like one of my really good well my best friend actually um mm-hmm. uh it started to click for me because the first year he came back from 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 Iraq he did he did three back to backs there and oh, it wasn't and wow. it wasn't. He Jesus. only he if I remember correctly he only volunteered for one just to get it out of the way so he couldn't get drafted for it you know mm-hmm. uh and then they wound up then they wound up putting him three back to back like he 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 finished his one tour he came back to the states for one or two months and they sent him right back out there again um stuff like that so the first time that he's actually home after all this is over and everything right um I he, we were hanging out for Fourth of July weekend with some friends and when the fireworks went off he just immediately disappeared. And that's when it that's when it kind of clicked for me that you know something you know something happened you know yeah yeah Poor yeah. yeah and uh, that uh fall of Fallujah game that Konami was going to do and I did would it. have I would have loved to have played that game see you know here's the thing about it and and I'm glad you mentioned that because I mm. feel like I feel like in all honesty this is a game that could have connected us to our troops and to their yes. ordeal I understand the implications of it you know like you know there was a whole there was on one side was the whole racial disparity. We're not trying to make brown people over in the Middle East, you know, mm-hmm. look bad and look like the enemy and stuff like that. And also at the same time, you know, it's a triggering effect for our soldiers and stuff like that. But as a veteran, uh, when I was serving, like I I dealt with people who had animosity towards me because I was a soldier. Uh, well, uh, I, I actually I was in the Navy, so I was a sailor. And uh, and the other day, actually, I saw something on social media where someone just came at like our, our servicemen and our veterans and stuff like that. And I almost interjected myself into it by saying, hey, like if you're not willing to make this sacrifice, then you can't really say anything bad about it. Because mm-hmm. because, yeah, on the outside to you, it may look like somebody joined the military just to kill other people. But I guarantee you, like it's either they w- need to make ends meet so they needed money they need to have some type of security and guess what uh you know the military actually offers that a lot better than some of our other high high profile institutions such as the police force for example the police force will not put you up in room and board they won't oh, oh no. no i've never yeah. heard of that ever yeah exactly, <laughs> yeah, exactly. but and, and, and you know i'm not trying to put i'm not trying to put a negative light on the police force you know given that all all the stuff that's going on around the police organizations right now but at the same time you know it's like you can't you can't look in you can't look at the at a military serviceman with disdain and animosity if you would never want to get up and and serve your country or be a patriot and i'm not even being patriotic when i say this you can't talk you can't talk crap about somebody's job if you're if you haven't done it or have not been willing to try it you know you can't talk about the guys who pick up trash you know 
and stuff yeah. like that. It's the outside looking in and your oh, perspective yeah. and your uh, perspective of what that end is going to be. People don't join the military and they just ship you over. There's a lot of stuff that comes with it. And if right. you're not even willing to, that's why I made that point. So I'm just like, if you're not even willing to stay, stand five, two minutes in a line waiting to be ringed up, you don't have a right to say about any other profession or any other thing. Exactly. If you're that impatient. Exactly. If you're gonna wind up, if you're gonna wind up crying about like waiting for your damn, you know, double bacon, egg and cheese biscuit, you know, whatever. <laughs> oh, but, I'd like, I'd like to see these people who are whining try to handle World War One, World War Two, Vietnam, Korea. Are you kidding me? We yeah. already without, have without a, the technology and luxuries we have we, today. <laughs> we already have the occupant in the White House thinking that George Washington was at the Chicago O'Hara Airport. <laughs> that nonsense. Oh, wait, what? You remember when he was when he had that military thing last last year? Oh yes, 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 yes. And, and he was just like, uh, the Air Force was like in 1942. I'm like, there was no Air Force, <laughs> so everybody was meaning George Washington. Oh, uh, you know the little uh uh conveyor belt when you get your luggage. Oh uh, yeah. You know, and they have him with the flag and everything. So they just haven't George. They were meaning him. Hard that day. I I couldn't hey, even hey. get on Twitter. I had hey, this whole presidency has been has been a meme opportunity one after the <laughs> other. This whole presidency. Honestly, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Uh, two reasons why, because I because um I missed my window to get back in and be able to like get my um get my pension because I only did six years in the military. Um, I I missed my window to where I could come back in, go full time reserves, and would have and by the time I turned sixty five, I would have gotten my full pensions from my original enlistment. But there was two reasons why I didn't I didn't go back in. Number one reason was because I it, politics aside, I I never honestly believed in why why we were over in, in the Middle East for the first reason. That was that was my main thing right there. But my second thing is is I'm sorry I don't I don't have I don't have the fortitude to to accept. Uh, orders from our commander in chief, the president of the United States. I, I don't. If it was if it was another person, it could be another Republican, whoever. I don't care because I've served in Republicans and I've served in Democrats while I was in the military. I can't I can't serve for this guy. I'm sorry. That's my political plug. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, because he whoever it is is your ultimate boss. Exactly. Yes, that that foolishness. Oh, just. Whew. I was telling <laughs> I was telling Ed that in January I stopped looking. at at Facebook and I re like about a month ago, I just straight up deactivated it because my boyfriend calls it a daily family reunion. <laughs> and you know how those can go sometimes. <laughs> I've, I've been on the fence about deact whether I want to deactivate it or not, but I think I am going to uninstall it from my, from my phone. I will keep it on my tablet, but I think about uninstalling it on my phone because in all, in all seriousness, Facebook is, Facebook is not done for me what – I think we talked about it on the 1v1. Um, Facebook is not done for me what I originally signed up for it uh, mm -hmm. to be about. Yeah. Uh, and it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm – like am I going to have to get on a plane and strangle one of my family members because they're <laughs> – because because they're because they are not showing the common sense that they wanted me they wanted me to grow up and have <laughs> it's like uh you guys preached to me for years while I was a kid like use common sense like do this stuff and then it's like uh did you just see the nonsense you just posted on Facebook thinking it's true <laughs> did you even like go on Google for like five seconds and look it up <laughs> what I guess what my political plug would be no matter who you vote for. You can criticize this person and you don't have to swear allegiance like this person is God to yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if I vote for somebody and they're messing up, I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't care who you are. But if you that's their public servants, they're meant well, to see, be criticized. This, this is the thing about it. Like and then we'll get into the show. Everybody now is trying to be Obama uh, because of the love and the continuous love that he got. Like we like you just seen last week. Um when Obama had the tan outfit on the tan suit and then Mitch McConnell do the tan suit and everybody was just like, who wore it better? You know, and stuff that, like that. that's the most hypocritical thing because Mitch McConnell was that he was the number one sucker that turned around and said, this is going to be a one term president. We are not going to work with this guy. So, so that crap, you, I can't wait for that turkey neck SOB to get, I hope Amy, <laughs> I hope Amy McGrath punches his teeth out oh, during, during the primaries. Oh, I, trust me. Them folks, uh, and we're gonna get into it. Um, 
I'm sorry. It's uh, a hot. It's a, it, it, it always let it out. Let it out. Vent. Oh, because the thing about it is, when Mitch McConnell was doing all of his press stuff, I think last year everybody came to the thing was booing him. Yeah. Well, like, well, well deserved. Yeah, and they're still like anytime he's trying to promote or say anything, he's still the and the must are up there trying to boo them. Them folks are not getting no unemployment money in your state that you want. Oh, you know yeah. what? Here's my I'm not a politician. I've thought I've I've considered going to politics at certain points in my life, but I'm not a politician. But here's the one piece of advice I can give anybody that's in public office, public service, whatever right now. You do not have to worry about peacocking during election season if you are doing everything right by your constituency during your terms. That is the number one thing I'm going to say to you. So if you are – my grandma used to say God doesn't like ugly. So if you've been ugly the entire time until it's time for you to need somebody, you <laughs> you are out of order. Uh, and, it, God will see that ugly and bring it all out, and we're mm-hmm. just gonna and like this like later on the discussion, we will grab our snacks and we will watch all of this unfold. <laughs> Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It seems like every time I get on these, I always derail like the actual <laughs> actual course of the conversation. Celeste, I'm so sorry. You, Leroy, you're already part of Boss Rush family. So <laughs> and, I, I, and, I, and I, I appreciate it. I am I am honored. Right. You are already part of Boss Rush family. So whenever you want to contribute to something, you can. This is a normal occurrence. You keep forgetting. Okay. How did we you look at our one v one on how many we have we a three from, hour podcast we, up. We went That's from okay. Robotech to uh to uh, Robotech stuff. to Met Metroid to freaking uh, we 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 were everywhere. <laughs> we tried to end the show three times. <laughs> it was another <laughs> two time in the conversation. <laughs> oh gosh, I cannot I cannot wait to finish it because I listen to it while I'm working, and then of course somebody at work needs me to do something. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have to pause it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm I'm on the last like 15 minutes of of my of my listen through of it, and it's been one of those things too. It's like I I, I have my headphones on, but uh, I swear y'all are bothering me, and I work from home. That's the crazy part. <laughs> me too. Yeah. I'm like, so, can y'all uh, can y'all take your distance? Did you did you check out the Bad Boy 34 anime that I sent you? Who who which one me? Yeah, I haven't seen it, so no, <laughs> I did not check it out. Okay, so yeah, check that one out. That's the anime that, like I said, I was talking about. Okay. Uh, so you might be like, wait, what is going on? Yes. Wait, dude, you were talking about when you was literally were talking about standalone complex. I was just like, I need to find, I, dude, I have to, I I need to order the Blu-ray. I need to find the whole series on Blu-ray and straight order it. You, uh, oh my. Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex is probably my favorite anime series that's the carryover into this new modern age of anime. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it is my favorite. Like, I remember seeing the original Ghost in the Shell movie back when it first debuted back in the 90s. Yeah, I did And I, and... I did not realize then that cyberpunk was something that I was into then. I didn't realize that then. Uh, But once, like, more cyberpunkish stuff came out, you know, like Dominion Tank Police and some of the uh, yeah. some of the other stuff, and then we get finally get a Ghost in the Shell series. That's when I realized I was like, oh, this is my thing. This is why Cyberpunk 2077. I cannot wait for it. Yeah, I'm picking that one up. Um, <laughs> goodness, I could just want to. I want to have this conversation when we got to start the show. Ghost Go in the Shell. The mm-hmm. Ghost in the Shell anime was something never done in anime that I seen. I thought Akira was, I thought Akira and Ninja Scroll was the height of stuff. I watched, I watched Ghost in the Shell and was just like, who, who did this? What is this? Like it was, it Ghost in the Shell is higher than Star Wars for me. Oh wow. It's not higher than Star Trek. Star Trek, I love. <laughs> okay, okay. You know, I would forgive you if you said Ghost in the Shell was higher than Star Trek because uh, because you're still in my wheelhouse. <laughs> oh, oh, well, Star. I try. I choose Star Trek over Star Wars in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. <laughs> you're not gonna get. You're not gonna get any arguments from me there. Like I, I, I personally feel like uh. I, Star Wars and Star Trek are well. Star Trek and Star Wars. I always, it's, uh, I always put them, I always put them in reverse. Even though Star Trek has been a thing longer than Star Wars, uh, yes. but they're, but they're two of the reasons why I wanted to become a writer and got into science fiction and stuff like that. Even though as I learn, even though as I got older and started taking my trip as a writer, I realized Star Wars is science fantasy, 
and while mm-hmm. Star Trek is science fiction. And the main differences between the two is that is that one is more heavily on the fancy element, and the other one is more heavily on the science element. So you yes. just and you know and and that right there, that's why that you know that's that's why like I try to get I try to get everybody that I know into Star Trek by not. I'm not trying to force it down their throats and stuff, but you know, like younger people's particularly, like, uh, like, like, you know, oh, uh, check this out, you know, watch this episode of Star Trek, especially if like you're like you're like you're a young girl or something, like, shoot, like, cause we need we need more women in science and engineering stuff, and sometimes mm-hmm. this is the stuff that gets like that whole that whole like mental brew going. It's like, oh, I want to do this, I want to I want to take apart machines and rebuild them and stuff like that, or I want to invent something, or I want to or I want to cure the common cold one day, you know, it's it's it's, it's it's stuff like that that actually gets people to realize that they can be better than anything they ever thought about. And this is and this is why Labo, when it first got introduced, sparked everybody's interest. Anyone who was an engineer, it was just like this creativity. Yes, Labo might not be as successful in people's eyes, but I'm just like, you cannot deny that N- Nintendo took the risk to get somebody, get the kid or even adults mm-hmm. into creating. Not mm-hmm. only designing with art with the box, um, creating different things that you could do with kind of like almost like a drag queen assist, taking stuff and creating something beautiful out of it. And like right. a work of art and still be able to this is how you create your own game, connect this energy thing. Like that area area grande one, uh music performance of the label thing, still is amazing <laughs> watching. As crazy as it is, it's still amazing. Celeste, real fast, you said you were following me on, on Twitter. I usually follow back damn near everybody, but some people are weirdos. Like, who are you on Twitter so I can follow That's you? That's okay. I'm a weirdo. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. No, when I say weirdos, I mean, I mean, whoa. <laughs> oh, I, I understand. I'm, I'm with another Zelda podcast. I'm, I'm their editor. And then about a month ago, Ed, like a little over a yes. month I've been with you guys, June, yeah. early June. Um, Yeah, Megan reached out to me, and I've just been bothering them ever since. <laughs> she, she, she's my personal editor and I love her. Oh, hey, oh hey. so that's uh Le was able to get the uh the um the game? The, uh, the game. He was able to get it first for everybody else did. I, was, oh, I wait, wait, I, wait, 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 wait. You mean you, you mean tell me I guessed that quicker than anybody else did? Yes. Well, I guess the sequel. Okay, I said Ninja Gaiden 2 because I've only, that's the only one I've played. Oh but but I was picturing that opening scene, but of course it's been I'm 31. It's been a little while since I've, I've played the original. <laughs> so. We're not even gonna talk about how old I am. 20? 25? No. Oh, he's, thank he's you. Five years, he's five years older than me. Did you take those balloons out your room yet? Was that? What? Oh, yeah, they're, take- yeah, they're gone. They're gone. I, finally, <laughs> uh, I think they've been gone. They actually they actually survived the entire month. I think um, I took them down like right after July 4th. So they, they survived an entire month. Okay. It's always fun to see how long balloons last. <laughs> Well, everybody, let's get into it. This is, uh, I recorded all of this, so this, you Have already fun, know. Have fun, Corey. Is... Sorry, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, did you see uh, Kami Jason was the snackable booty? <laughs> I didn't listen so, to that one yet. I just saw no, the, the, no, the uh, I, caption. I was like, so, snackable booties? So, My goodness. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, Corey, so Corey put out to, before he made put out the 1v1, because it's out now, he was just like, should I call this episode the Snackable Booty? And I was just like, yes. So in the description, you read like uh, t- uh, 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 at that ventricle talks to at Common Jace about this, this, and of course Snackable Booty. <laughs> I read that. I was like, I had to do a double take. Wait, like, did I did I just I, read Snackable Booty? <laughs> I, I saw that and immediately retweeted it. I. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Well, everybody, let us get into this podcast. So I'm so excited.